And I'm DJ. And I'm Diggins. And this is Mostly Nitpicking, a podcast where every week we pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! Woo! Yeah! Hooray! You guys, they thought we forgot, but we didn't forget. Because last week we did a, a podcast on Joker. Um, because mm-hmm. that was the week that Joker came out. And before mm-hmm. that, I don't even remember. Something else. Megalopolis, Megalopolis baby! Yeah! Yeah. So this has been a lot of, we've gotten a lot of releases this year, um, and a lot of them have been bad, so it's been pretty fun to do. But um, we are in a certain month, uh, and even though this month does not currently feature a major release starring this actor, we're going to go back to it and get the backlog of, um, what what was this called? What's this month? What's the long name that I always forget? The Hutch for Red October. <laughs> Well, or is it is the hush the hutch for red Josh Tober or something like that? The, or Rock- the hutch Tober? for red Rocktober. Rocktober, yeah. Although I guess um, this year it's the hutch for red phrase Tober. Mm. Mm. Yeah, the hutch for red whale whale Tober. Or um, I was thinking maybe mm. hutch me up when Sep Brender ends. Oh, that would be good. Also a good option. Also a good option. Or yeah. Yeah, ah, oh, that is good. Sep, but see, but it's not. Then we would have to have done it in September, right? Like, well, no, because Sep Brender. Has oh, ended, right. And now we're hushed yeah. up. Now we're hushed up. Okay, yeah, that that works. So yeah, we're doing one of the Hutcherson movies. Uh, the, the one of the ones we actually I saw somebody in the Discord say we didn't name this one in our list last week, but one of the ones we haven't done yet. Um, and there's several, so you never know which one that is. It's with a full list of debt. I mean, we have actual movie debt, but as far as like Josh Hutcherson movies, we talked oh, okay. about a couple of them that like Mentioned were pretty good. Zathura, um, Vampire's Assistant, uh, Bridge Terabithia. Uh, oh, right. This isn't even debt. This is just. No, this isn't debt. This no, is, this this is just well, debt to the month. For Hutch like, debt to the month. Right. We're indebted to the month. That's that's. Yeah, we owe the month. As um, as is typical for us, we're starting a theme month in the middle of the month. Mm-hmm. Obviously. And. And maybe we'll do like one week of it, maybe two, but not that many because <laughs> there's going to be Phantom and other stuff coming up soon. So, what are the other ones? I have a little list of all of his movies. Oh, yeah, Red Dawn, Epic. We talked about a bunch of these uh, that, that could be done in the future. We'll see if we if we decide to. Um, but uh, bef- before that, we have this week's one, which we'll get to if you're watching the podcast with the title you can see the title is that one um and you may be like wait didn't they do that one and it's like no we skipped it we went straight to the other one so now we're going back uh um, we did two because it has the rock in it and what i right. learned from this is that we missed nothing in terms and of understanding it, that second one except except they they tease the wrong sequel right at the end of the movie oh, they yeah. tease a sequel that doesn't happen or like that that's not the sequel that has happened that they tease, which is weird. Just like but at the is... end of two, they tease they teased a sequel that never happened at all. <laughs> well, not yet. I mean, it took a while. Well, actually, was there time between one and two? One more than like a couple of years. I think it was that long. Jo- oh, okay. uh, Josh Hutcherson was still a babby. Yeah. Well, the first one was oh eight. The second one was twenty twelve. So four years. Okay, so if there, you know, maybe there's like a little time it takes between them for, for like the fan base to age and then have kids of their own and then become you know out of options enough to want to introduce their kids to this and then they'll make a third one like beetlejuice or something not that they made third beetlejuice but you know oh, we will. get those a lot yeah beetlejuice 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 mm-hmm. um it's beetlejuice, beetlejuice made a ton of money there's no way they're not making a third it's so weird that the sequel to this movie that we're doing, the only carryover is Josh Hutcherson. It's not weird at all because he's the champ. He's like, like a, a huge star that everyone loves. I, I guess it's available. Yeah. Why do you think we do a whole theme month around him? Is <laughs> it an true. elaborate bit about how he's not a very huge or popular actor and it's funny that we have a theme month about him? No, it's because the people love the Hutch. They do. Mm-hmm. They do. Us and he's one of our... And we need to raise him up as as people because he is one of our short kings. He was one of our Hollywood oh, short kings. That's true. He is that. <laughs> on full display in this movie. So 
you know. Well, he was a child. <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't looking good. From from there, we were all ready, like, get this guy one of those Tom Cruise shoe things that makes you look like a six foot tall person. The trend lines gonna were work bad. Out. Yeah. Um, on that, you know, he's and he's doing great. At, you know, Josh Hutcherson, he's, he's got lots of stuff going for him. Maybe another beekeeper. Who knows? Another Five Nights at Freddy's. So sky's the limit. I- I mean, I assume he just has so much money that it doesn't matter. Like that, those Hunger Games movies must be paying dividends. Like, yeah. Was the last? And they're making a new one. Uh, yeah. Oh, but he's got Uh, two more coming up: the Long Home and Little Mouth. We'll see what those. Yeah, there's also something called Long. No. Hmm. Let's see. What is it? Uh, tech billionaire, something, something. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, you need IMDb Pro to see it for me. I don't because I can't oh, look at it. Gross. But Long Gone, he has something called Long Gone Heroes, where he's like a cool action star. Okay. Alongside mm-hmm. Andy Garcia and Frank Grillo and stuff. So that's pretty Other good. Other huge stars. Yep. They've been in movies we've seen, for sure. Andy Garcia mm-hmm. was in Expend Four Bulls, I think. Right. It's like the bad guy of it or something. I you could have told you could tell me nearly anybody was yeah. in Expend Four Bulls, and I'd be like, probably, yeah. When are they going to get the Hutch? That's what. Oh, they, need. they should get the Hutch. Well, he That's could be true. the bad guy because like, I, I think the Hutch would be a good villain in those movies. Like he in could Beekeeper, be the thing I can't believe they've never done in those movies, as far as I know, having not watched most of them, where he is like leads the hotshot new mercenary group where yeah. we're like mm-hmm. time to retire old men it's time <laughs> for the new hot mercenary guys but then it turns out that he's secretly evil because young people are bad and old people are good I mean, this is true yeah. you see this is that's kind of the plot of the third one except that's not it but there is that whole thing where it's like the young hot new expendables but then the movie just kind of forgets about that because they're pretty boring. And also Antonio Banderas is part of it. So, yeah, they need that or they need the guy. He could be the tech guy who's like, Expendables, psh, we need AI to solve the problems of the modern age. There so it is. we're going to get our Robo Spendables or something. We call them Terminator <laughs> bots or something. Speaking of that, news of this week, a lot of news, I'm sure, especially probably some breaking as of when we're recording this from Comic-Con. But... The main news that everyone cares about, they're finally making a movie based on Electric State. You guys love Electric State? Electric State is my favorite piece of media. Yeah. Same. That is what it is. Yeah, that's a media is a Mm -hmm. graphic novel. Uh, You're on the right track, I think. It's like a, so from what I understand, not from what I understand, but I, it's like a visual novel or something where it's pictures of stuff, but there's no like narrative. And I don't think there's words, but it's like, ooh, the future. What if a retro future, a big, big mess of a, a robot was covered with grass? So it's like, just like that a bunch cool? of concept art? Yeah, pretty much. Um, it It's not like, I mean, it's pretty popular in terms of, you know, to be one of these because they don't usually get. I, oh no! I can, apparently, is, well, hold yeah. on. I'm getting two answers from I Wikipedia. am too. So wait, what is it? Huh? What are what Wikipedia are your is answers? Telling me both graphic novel and illustrated novel. Yeah, One of my two favorite kinds of novels, right there. I don't know which one came first. I thought the visual novel. I thought the the uh, graphic novel was kind of recent, and the visual novel was the original, but. I'm not sure about that now. Now I'm, yeah, I'm questioning. But also, there's apparently an uh, like a role playing thing you can do of oh, it. Oh yeah, this is the Tales from the Loop guy. Who's that? Uh, Steinman Stalinhog is a that Swedish... character from this movie we just watched. That's right. If you line up all his letters and the names, it looks like oh, elements man. or something. Yeah. Nando, you better hope we don't have any Scandinavian <laughs> fans, because if they hear you yeah, mistaking a, Scan- yeah. a Swedish name for an Icelandic name, they're mm-hmm. going to tear you apart. What are they going to do? Make me eat their disgusting fish from the oh, ground? Nando's That's where a fish heel should now. be from. Oh. Yeah. Nando's Only for like, Swedes. you can never, you'll never make me eat loot fisk Swedes. Never. Yeah. I, they're 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 lovely people um but yeah i don't know what the, i guess this isn't 
I was I was sure this was some sort of like just like what we were saying, like visual novel, but it does look like it's also a graphic novel. But maybe it's like no, I think so. I think what it is. Well, no, no, I do, yeah. I do have to tell you that uh, visual novel is a different thing. Um, What's visual that? novel true. is a video game where you read words while looking at pictures of sexy anime women. Oh, then what is what would you call this if it's just pictures, no words, but it does kind of tell a story? Is that also a graphic novel? I mean, I could say graphic novel, honestly. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, that's what it is. Um, and it's like looking at landscapes and think, thinking, "Wow, wow!" There used to be robots imagine if here. There were robots, guys. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Imagine. Imagine. Well, you don't have to anymore because they made a a movie. By they, I mean those those lovable Russos, uh, Joe and Anthony. I assume uh, made the a movie of it, and it's apparently the. Even though it doesn't have words and stuff, there is, and it might have some words, but um, it like there is a narrative to the electric state of a kid looking for something, you know, uh, from the West Coast to the East Coast or something like that. So um, it seems like they're kind of adapting that into a movie for Netflix. Wow. Which means everyone's favorite. Yep. It comes out on March 14th. So happy. Uh, is that Valentine's Pi Day? Day. It's Pi Day. Pi- yeah. Oh, because of robots. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Did you say so. is that Valentine's Day? Yeah, I did. All right, you have to pause the podcast for his gaff now because I got grilled last week for Bonaparte Napoleon. So take it away, Diggins. Well, DJ, I was in the middle of doing that, but because you're making such a big deal out of it, now I feel like I have to stop. Well, then I'll do it. Nando, how could you possibly? How could you possibly think that Valentine's Day? Valentine's Day is March 14th. That's crazy. Well, when is Valentine's Day? Obviously, it's February, but is it one of those holidays that doesn't have a date? Or is, does it have a date? No, it's February 14th. This is a bit. No, it's it a It is bit. February 14th. Okay. This must be I a couldn't bit. tell. But I mean, I, I, you know, it's one of those holidays, like a person's birthday, where, like, I don't know exactly. I Like, I might not know exactly when it is, but when you get into the month, you're like, oh, right. That's what day that is. Tuesday or something. And, uh, this is interesting. Is you're in a relationship. Nando has exactly. never remembered Valentine's Day in any year, in any relationship he's ever been in. How dare you? This last year, 2024, you guys know what I was doing on Valentine's Day. It's probably the same thing we were all doing on Valentine's <laughs> Day. Let's go to see Madam Webb. Madam Webb. Yeah, that's what I do on <laughs> Valentine's Day. So Every maybe I'm person. confused. Maybe I'm confused. And maybe this is even true because maybe one of the release dates for Madam Web was originally March 14th and then ended up coming out on Valentine's Day. And in my head, I went Madam Web Day. And then in my head, I was like, I saw that on Valentine's Day. It's very noble. That must of be you. March 14th. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I went by myself, I believe, too. I was going to say, I believe you said that you got your partner the present of not having to see it. Yeah. With you. <laughs> I don't think she's seen it yet either, even though I've said you should maybe watch it because it's kind of funny. But not, uh, yeah. No, there's no time, uh, and there won't be because the electric state is going to be the next big Madam Web of next year, plus a month uh, in March 14th. Well, you um, say the next big Madam Web, Nando, but we've already determined that Madam Web isn't even close to the worst movie of this year anymore. Yeah, well, that's that's good for this movie then, and especially since it's a Netflix movie. The bar is pretty low, so I think it's probably going to do okay. It's got Better all of our favorite worse stars. Than Atlas. What do we think? I, I already think it's better than Atlas. I'm I'm Atlas mm. was so boring. Interesting. Because it has Mr. Peanut in it. Yeah, it has Mr. Peanut and like um Kihei Kwan and like a silly wig and stuff. Does it have is it is was that Stanley Tucci by the way in it? Or is that Mark Strong? I can no, never it's remember. Stanley, Stanley Tucci. Oh there you go. You got the Tucci too. Yeah. You can't The Tucci this, is, this you can't lose. There will already be parts of this that will be good because they have him in it. Yeah, Wait, was Mark Strong? True. Mark Strong was in the other one, right? In Atlas, I believe Mark Strong was the military guy in Atlas. Yes. Yeah. So that's probably why he's not in this. Probably busy. <laughs> it was a conflict of interest. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, what did you guys think of the Electric State trailer that just came out? Um, I I sure did think that. Boy, this will probably turn out to be not as bad as the Gray Man. Maybe. 
we can hope. I think a lot fewer cops are going to die in this one, which automatically makes it worse. Mm. Mm. But what if they're like robot cops? Like drone cops getting getting swatted by a big cat monster like robot thing. Does that count for you? Mm. Do they have souls? Can a robot cop have a soul? Well, mm. it's not. No, but not because they're robots, because they're cops. Yeah, ex- exactly. So then it's like, what? Yeah, what? Uh. How many how many RoboCops getting their heads smushed by the big Mr. Peanut is enough to make it uh If they're identified if they're robot cops, then I'm okay then like I guess that would count. That would count. Mm. But I don't I'm think the robots are gonna be cops. The robots are like the rebels, right? I don't know, because I feel like we saw at least one shot where like robots seem to be fighting other robots. Mm. Okay, so there's that one clip. That because I have it on my on the computer now, where like a big giant one is getting dragged to the ground in the middle of like a pool. Like there's some water, not like a like a pool, like the pool, like the one by the, like the Lincoln Memorial. Um, and there's a lot of little robots that seem to be doing the grabbing, and they look like humanoid. But there's one that passes by the camera, and I don't think that's a person. Well, there's because there's, there's good robots and bad robots, right? Is that what we're led to right. believe? Right. A few bad robots, you know, but mostly good robots. <laughs> That's what, mm-hmm. what we know. And the bad robots are no reflection on the good robots or anything about the system of roboting. Mm-hmm. That is true. The robots, uh, yeah. So we should probably give them more robo tanks or whatever it is they want more of. I don't know. What do the robots want? Uh, Oil? Well, in, in this movie, I assume it's electricity. Yeah. Right. That would That's make sense. Probably huge. Yeah, the uh, we don't really get a whole, whole lot of plot here besides just like, yeah, you know, boomers writing about AIs and stuff, or boomers written by an AI going like, people don't connect anymore because of their phones and they don't go outside. <laughs> yeah, so here's what I understand. So the robots take over and then they like strap us to Apple Vision Pros and make us watch like Robo Propaganda. Is that... Is that well, what happens? I guess we don't know what they're watching. It might be that porn that the that uh, Chewbacca's dad is watching during oh, yeah. the ho- holiday special. Um, That's true. We don't know that they're not watching a hologram dancing sexily while they jack it in the living room. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't know what it like because it, it seems like it seems like robots are built. Robots get involved in like invented or whatever Mm -hmm. and then they have robo society but then i'm gonna say corporocon or something the evil corporation (laughs) wants to standardize all the robots and then makes the other robots illegal or something you know kind of like that movie robots do you ever see robots i did stanley tucci's in that one too yeah so it's probably that I mean, this cast is is so stacked and, you know, so many familiar Russo faces, faces, right? You got your, oh yeah, obviously your Chris Pratt, you got your Anthony Mackie, uh, we have other familiar Russos here. Mr. Um, Peanut. Right. Yeah. Uh, Uh, let's see. Have any of the rest of these guys Is he a familiar Russo? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, like he was in Loki, but no, I wouldn't say like. They weren't the Russo. They weren't the Loki uh, people. So no, I don't think he's ever been in a Russo property. Uh, Nobody watched see. that Cherry movie, so maybe he was in that. Boy, maybe we're they were all in that. A who's who game uh, for this one. It's it's kind of like if like everyone's kind of in it. Like Jason mm-hmm. Ken- Alexander's in it, Alan Tudyk's in it, Michelle Yeoh's in it, Billy Bob Thornton. It's like a lot of random people in here. We really? Because they're of not money even to have a bunch of stars voice robots for two seconds. A thing That's... that will appeal to nobody. <laughs> Well, that's so weird because they're not even on the commercial. Like, on the at the end of the trailer, there are a bunch of names, but like half of the ones you just said aren't on that list. I mean, it's, I'm maybe the internet's lying to me, but I'm I'm going off. Uh, oh no, I believe you. It's definitely internet. going to be cameo fest. It's just interesting that like how many cameos there are that they couldn't even fit some of them. That I think I don't know. I guess Alan Tudyk wouldn't be a big draw for people. You see their silly robots Actually, in the movie. You just assume one of them's probably Alan Tudyk already. The only yeah, I was gonna say, the only Vern name in there that if someone said they play a minor like voice role and I would get excited is Alan Tudyk. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm pretty hyped for Jason Alexander. 
he doesn't do that much stuff, you know? I know. So he probably wants a boat or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, another one? He wants another boat? Money. Yeah. Oh, so many boats. That's true. Well, it's probably tough because, like, he has a lot of boats, but Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld have way more boats, you know, because they're way right, richer. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, you got to kind of be a little bit more. You got to work just to be on the same level as them. Yeah, I They feel can't like... be buying everybody tickets to the Amalfi Coast or whatever. It's got to be somebody else. I feel like he's on, like, the, the second tier of Seinfeld alums where it's mm-hmm. like, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, Larry David, and uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Is she emerged. on tier yeah. one? She's on tier one? I think she's the only one who's still, like, doing consistent great work. Okay, honestly. fair enough. Yeah, and she's independently wealthy. Her That's true. She is rich. Husband yeah. or father, I can't remember who, but somebody in that family is like stupid rich. So she's like she's technically Nepo, richer than the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, she's um like a billionaire, I think. So you you got those, and then you have Jason Alexander mm-hmm. tier below, mm-hmm. and then you have mm. Kramer's actor, whose name I forget. Michael Richards in, in, in canceled jail. Mm, not anymore yeah. he's out him and kevin spacey the whole crew they're back baby on the streets causing <laughs> causing trouble yeah it was i mean so you can't pee tickets what are we gonna do put people in canceled jail forever mm. even regular jail has sentences you know that last May- maybe that's what this life. movie is about maybe all the robots get canceled and that's why Ooh. they're like walked out of san francisco via the bridge into the wilderness or whatever and it's like, they canceled my dad. We got to go save him from being canceled. You're not Seems allowed like you to could... live in our liberal cities because you're canceled. Mm-hmm. I think I could convince some of the people on this movie to do that. Like so some of this cast. I think I could go up to Woody Harrelson and be like, it's a movie about a guy who gets canceled. And then he goes and starts a war over it. And he'd be like, yeah, that's what it is, man. The vaccines. And then, uh, yeah. And I then think he would take Chris another Pratt, huge rip of his bong. Yeah. <laughs> I think Brian Cox is probably not anti-cancellation. Uh, it, it, I think he's one of those guys that I think if you ask him about being canceled, he'd be like, fuck him. I hate all the guys. Anybody who's canceled <laughs> can, can fuck themselves. Probably. So that's cool. Yeah, but he probably also hates them for reasons that have nothing to do with why they were canceled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about Millie Bobby Brown? Let's let's try to figure her out. Uh, friend of Drake. So there's that. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, has never disavowed Drake as far as I know. Maybe they're saving it for the Super Bowl. It's got to be. Oh, I can't it's wait. It's going to be a big moment when she <laughs> pops out of the stage. <laughs> During yeah. Kendrick Lamar's performance of um, Not Like Not Us. Not Like Us. Yeah, her and whatever Bon Jovi relative she's married to come out with a guitar and they do they do a big song, like a big guitar solo in the middle of Not Like Us. That'd be pretty good. Do you guys know she's married to a Bon Jovi? I did. She got married, which was a big deal for Drake, but I didn't know it was a Bon Jovi. Like the other day. His name is Jake Bon Jovi, by the way, which is like, okay, not as good as John Bon Jovi, you know? Yeah, they could have thought that one out, right? Yeah. Yeah, Dom Bon Jovi, Tom Bon Jovi. Mm, Okay, no, you got me there. Yeah. But also, uh, maybe he was trying to be sabotaged by his dad. It's like no one will ever be the coolest Bon Jovi. <laughs> maybe maybe Bon Jovi name. was like, I can't risk any of my children becoming more popular than me. Yeah. How is a? Did you guys know how Bon Jovi is spelled? It's J O N, B O N, J O V I. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. But then that's like kind of an. Th- that's his stage I even name. Know. I believe yeah. the actual last name that he has is spelled more Italianly. Yeah, I'd never seen it spelled out before, but it's Bon Jovi, kind of. B-O-N-G-I-O-V-I. So one, just one word. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. fixed his name. Hey, he's, another, he's another New Jersey boy. He is. He's one of our favorites, too. Like, I think between him and Springsteen... They could be the main ambassadors for the state, I think, as far as... Was it, was it him or Springsteen who declined having one of the Parkway exit rest stops named after them? I, I think it was him, but I can't yeah, remember this. Yeah, that for sure. sounds right. 
Oh, no, they I'm, do have one. You know, yeah. So it would have been Springsteen, right? Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Because John Bon Jovi is like, I feel like New Jersey famous, but Springsteen is like internationally famous, right? Like he, mm-hmm. like off the top of my head. Uh, okay, so we have a Whitney Houston one. Um, although she's pretty super famous, but maybe she couldn't say no. And I mean that really? literally. Why couldn't she say no, DJ? <laughs> she did. She died, maybe. But yeah. maybe this was before she died. I don't know. She died when we were in, so. in college, right? Recent. I think that one's yeah. my knee. Um, gosh, I, I think they I mean, renamed wasn't, it. There was a Woodrow Wilson one at one point, but I think they renamed there it. There still is. is Didn't there still uh, Tony okay. Soprano get one? The actor James oh, Gandolfini, James Gandolfini. Think has one now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm pretty sure he's got one. Uh, oh, who else? Um, that's it. That's all of them. It's really, it's a mess. You know, you get on the yeah. turnpike, you get on the parkway, and you just have to hold your pee for, you know, an hour because there's only three rest stops. All right. Whitney I, Houston, I, I, Bon Jovi, Woodrow Wilson. Oh, and then James Gandolfini. So, yeah. I got him. You guys want You guys want to hear him? Yeah. So we have the, let's do it. We have the Clara Barton. Oh. Gr- Grover Cleveland. Yeah. John Fenwick. Okay. Joyce, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Joyce Kilmer. Val Kilmer's uh, wife. Mm. Maybe, I don't know. Um, Richard Stockton. Yeah. Is that not the basketball player? This is nope. a different one. Thomas Edison. Sure, yeah. Don't Vince remember. Lombardi. Mm. Walt Whitman. Oh. Uh, Woodrow yeah. Wilson, she mentioned. Uh, Alexander Hamilton. Oh, from Hamilton. James Fenimore Cooper. Mm. John Bon Jovi, which is the Bon Jovi service area. It's the Bon Jovi service area. So it could be for uh, any of the Bon Jovi. Yes. That's a good could point. Be for, could be for Millie Bobby Brown now. Yeah. She could inherit it. You should be able to eat for free if it's yours, too. <laughs> I didn't bet you can. But just be able to walk up to one of the McDonald's and take a $15 Big Mac. It's just right off the rack. I'm not paying. Don't you see my name on the door? Fuck you, he says. He could get away with it because he's Bon Jovi. I feel like Bon Jovi could do that if he really wanted to. Absolutely. The only problem is, I don't know if everybody, I don't know if a 25-year-old kid working at the McDonald's would be able to recognize Bon Jovi from just his face. I think Bruce could get away with it, but I don't know about Bon Jovi. I don't know that I could recognize Bon Jovi just from his oh, face. Oh, come on. This is I think you can. I, I, right I also didn't think I could, maybe, but then I looked at a picture and I was like, oh, yeah, that's Bon Jovi. Um, he is older sh- now, so there's that, but yeah. yeah I think Bruce Springsteen has, like, easy it is. and maybe you've seen him. Maybe, you know, maybe he's been in the background of your life this whole time and you haven't even noticed. Maybe I he's in the room with you right now. to where he lives. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'm just gonna round out the list here. Molly Pitcher. Oh what, yeah, that yeah, like the inn. Exactly. Uh, Whitney Houston, like we mentioned. Uh, James Gandolfini, we mentioned. Uh, uh, the only ones we didn't mention: uh, Frank Sinatra and Judy Bloom. Frank hmm. Sinatra. Where is his? Is his by like? This is like way South to, Jersey. It's not like, related yeah. to where they lived or were, were crazy connected to at all. They're just like random. Yeah, his Ugh. is like Atlanta County, so like way, way, way South Jersey. We should shuffle them. Wait, Atlanta County? Oh, you said Atlantic Atlantic, County. Atlantic County. Okay. Yes. It's like, uh, wow, that's weird. really South Jersey, <laughs> Atlanta <laughs> County. Um, is this the most inside Jersey thing we've ever done? Yeah. This is like pretty that's, much. That's a lie. Remember the Union episode? Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah, so we true. talked about Jersey a lot. It seems like this movie, this electric state, takes place in the West Coast because of that one time where they showed the Space Needle and stuff. Um, which is which makes I think they're sense. They're traveling west, so I don't know where they start from. Mm. It does seem like they get they travel by way of being picked up by a big robot, and he just kind of runs. So that's pretty. That can't be that fast. It's gonna be a pretty slow slow trip. So are we excited for this movie or? Uh... Are we Not really. Electric yeah, you know, we'll see. I'm excited to do a podcast about it because it. Yeah, it'll be a fun podcast. It. Yeah, yeah. It's it's got a very like, it's it's I I don't hate the Russos or anything like that. Um, I do think they 
seem to have developed the uh, Marvel kind of brown and gray and beige aesthetic and like really turn that into the the main thing uh, and it looks like yeah. they brought that here but also it's in a world where everything looks like that on purpose so it's like this is perfect for them yeah. how many I, I mean I, I guess I shouldn't assume how good or bad this movie will be but how more of these movies do they get before it's like you know what they're not good they're just not Netflix? good infinite yeah I don't Eight. know as many as they want do you, well, because they keep raising the price, and I feel like there's even a threat they're going to do it again this year. So mm. I think the question is, how many times do they make these before we go, like, obviously they're just... Because it's at a certain point, it doesn't feel like it's like you subscribing to a subscription service as much as you giving someone money to make movies, kind of. <laughs> like, which is what it is. But if it's like, don't make that with my extra $20. Like, yeah, I feel like... I don't know. I guess like nobody watches the movies though. It's all Squid Game and shit, so they'll probably be fine. But it's all Squid Game and the real Squid Game and Mr. Beast's Squid Game. Mm. Now that one was on Amazon, and also we'll probably never see it because of lawsuits or something. So yeah, he almost killed three did guys. Did it never or come out? So he so. did a. To be fair, he did a Squid Game video that he did do, but there's a new show on Amazon that's like the Mr. Beast show. Of Mr. Beast games, and uh, there were lots of reports from set that were not good. Uh, so I don't know if we'll ever yeah. see it. I, I heard Mr. Beast has been canceled. He oh has no, been canceled. Yeah, so he's been gonna go to robot jail with the rest of the robots. He probably would have been in this. Remember when he was in Ninja Turtles for a second? Oh, yeah, and you had to be told, but you were like, Oh, I guess that was him, right? Bullshit. He broke union rules to talk about it. Mm hmm. Yeah, and, you know, didn't help. Did not help. The kids <laughs> didn't go out to see it. Uh, you know, you can blame a lot of things on the uh, on the, on the the writer's strike and actor's strike or whatever, but he was out there promoting the movie once by accident, and it still did well, but not great. Um, well, listen, we all we'll agreed know. that movie was quite good. Oh, yeah, it was the best movie of the year, pretty much. But, like, it has a... Uh, it's it's in the same space as the Transformers one was this year, where it like made money, but not the incredible amount of money necessary to guarantee a sequel. It's got to be like at the end of the year, some guys doing numbers, and he's like, "All right, you get a sequel." But I do think that show that one has a show too, so that is one of the reasons it's kind of profitable, and they seem kind of bought in on the Ninja Turtles as opposed to Transformers, which like I think it just broke its like broke even. The other day, so it seems they like that solely might not. Off the back of that one Twitter guy. Yep, he's a hero, and you know, to be fair, it's better than Joker, so he's not wrong. And <laughs> yeah, he... I'm. Yeah, I mean, fair point. Like, how much else? I mean, listen, I'll get to it later. Certainly not the best robot movie in theaters right now, but no, still. It, well, yeah, that's true. And it's not going to be the best one in March of 2014, March March 14th of 2024, when it uh, when it when it has to go up against Electric State. That's true. That's tough. gonna be tough. It's gonna be yeah. Tough. Speaking of movies that uh, are uh, well, they're not robots necessarily, but it features sign like some um CGI and stuff that has a a so. sheen of robotics to it. And yeah, so CGI that rigid. looks like it might be uh, animatronics or otherwise something that's not real. Yeah, you can see the little loading screens on the little pieces of it. It's so computerized and um, well, well, we'll get to it. We're talking about uh, our movie of the week, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Um, and One. you don't pronounce the journey to like a number. You pronounce the two in it like a word. It's right. very important. Mm -hmm. Because the second one is Journey to colon the mysterious island, but that is a uh, that is Journey and then the number two. Sorry, I love the way you pronounced mysterious there. Yeah, I I, I really tripped over it because I wasn't sure if I was also going to say, uh, well, did I say colon? Because there's a colon there too. These, you did these say titles. Colon. Okay, good. That was probably why my head was like having having to decide that one on the fly. Usually I write down all the words that we just say in the podcast in order before we before we record. Mm -hmm. And oh, I just read them yeah. off of a script. But this time I had to make a game time decision and it totally fucked the whole thing up. 
Um, yeah, Nando usually shares his cards with us ahead of time, so we know when to interject and react. Exactly. Uh, but. Oh yeah, I'm usually <laughs> way more together. I write all the ums in, and you know, coming up with people's names based on eight other things they've done. That's for you guys, for the podcast <laughs> yeah. listeners. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I know what their names are in real life. Um, but speaking of that, we're talking about a movie with some people in it. Uh, two, <laughs> uh, three actually. Let's not forget one. Uh, but we're gonna talk about Journey to the Center of the Earth. Uh, for 2008. A wonderful movie. I am the IMDb has been this week because I won for Joker. Fair and square. Won very yeah. fairly and very squarely. I think, I think the jury's still out on that one, actually. I think the count isn't finished yet. Okay. Wow. Is he the is he the jury foreman, the count? Because he's he'd be a good foreman because he could count the votes very easily. You know? If Elmo was in charge, he'd fuck up the counting of the votes and then they'd be like. Elmo, there's not 13 people here. Oh, my God. We have to go back and do it again. <laughs> it should have been the count, but it wasn't. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to talk about this movie. And first, the way we always do this on the podcast, we're going to talk about the IMDb summary. Uh, and you guys know how they make the IMDb summaries. How do they do it? I would love you to tell us. Okay. So um, back, back, back 300 years ago, 300-ish years ago, uh, no, actually, close to 400 years ago, um, there were a bunch of secret uh, people with uh, magical talismans all over the world. Uh, and the, each talisman had the uh, aspect of a certain uh, movie genre. So there was the Western talisman and the this talisman and the you know animation talisman, blah, blah, blah. Animation is not a genre, but that's what they thought it was when they made the talismans. Uh, and they didn't know what they were. They just had these little little things that had little symbol on them like a cowboy hat or for animation i guess it would be like a little pencil i don't know um we lost all the talismans have been lost to time but uh those people all found these things found or made these things we we don't know and then they met uh every year and took the talismans and put them in a pool and then they would float to the top of the pool and in that order you would be able to use the secret code that only they knew to decode what the uh, IMDb summaries for movies are and uh, they did this like in the 1600s or whatever uh, in the years equal to where they are now so like they did you know 16 uh, 22 and that was the 19 or yeah that was the 1922s movie summaries and and you know like that so they have movie summaries for movies that are going to come out in like four or five years uh that they're working on right now and that's like the ancestors of the talisman people um and whenever a new genre shows up like uh you know disney remake or something uh the talisman has to be created in a little little box so that was pretty cool probably a new talisman for this movie because this is one of those first 3d movies i don't know if you guys caught this from watching it but uh that was a that was an innovation that was probably oh. invented for this movie. Sure was. What? Um, this is a 3D movie? Yeah, yeah. You'll never believe it. It had that one staple of a 3D movie, which is a character having a yo-yo for a second. And it's like, wow. Because <laughs> Spy Kids also had that. Um, speaking of other 3D movies, I remember that. We did that one on the podcast. Just real quick before I forget, can you guys recall the most egregious like 3D portion of this movie? In my opinion, that I'm like, wow, that's way too much. It's very early in the movie. Very early. I was going to say, there's so many to pick from. I don't know exactly which one you're referring to. I guess. I mean, for me, it really was the yo-yo. But if there was something else, I, I know you're like, it's something that he has in his office, right? Or something it, like that. It, it's close. Like for, for me, it's um it's when Seth Myers is in the lab and he's like poking around. And he takes his like measuring tape. And he's measuring something. Yeah. And then he turns around with it and like whoosh. And like the mm. measuring tape is like ninety percent of the screen is just coming out. It's like weird aspect ratio. It's so wild. Can you, can you believe it? They like you would go to you'd be at home and you'd be like, I wish I could live in a fantasy world of magic and monsters and shit. And then the first thing that comes up is a fucking measuring tape. Woo! It's like crazy. They've really they pushed the limits on this one. Measure tape was probably really easy for this, too, because they knew all the yeah. numbers for it. You know, when they did it in real life, <laughs> yeah. they could figure out exactly how far the measuring tape was from stuff. So 
Pretty good. Oh man, Pretty that's smart why they had to do it first. They had to like really nail down the technology <laughs> yeah. with the measuring tape before they could do it with anything else. Yeah, that was how they set the cameras every day. They took a measuring tape and just wiped it around. <laughs> and then at the end of the thing, they were like, you know what? They could they could use in this because we only have fifty, uh, you know, little gags here. We need another one. They they put one of the measuring tapes in, and uh, that was going to be a, obviously a trivia because that is the trivia here. But oh, we'll have to find another one. Well, all right, and first, well. we'll have to do the IMDb summary because maybe we won't even need it. Um, I will say the summer, IMDb summary for this movie is okay. Um, it's like, I think it's old enough. It's before the AI started getting involved and fucking these all up uh, that I think it's, you know, largely the story of the movie. Uh, it's not super long, so I wouldn't get go super all long right. with it. Um, yeah. And then uh, who gets to go first? Dickens gets to pick. Oh, Dickens gets to pick. As the one who was unjustly, uh, his victory was unjustly stolen from him. I do get to choose first. In some people's opinions. Mm -hmm. In some people, some, you know, uh, well, well, I'd say most people. I might say nearly everyone, but, you know, whatever. It's fine. Not me. Um, DJ, why don't you go first? Boo. But yeah, that makes sense. Um, Okay. Um, A... A scientist and his nephew go on an unlikely journey to the center of the earth to, yeah, to find his long lost brother. Is it the end? Yeah, that's all I got. Okay. Diggins, what about you? Uh, Following clues left by his late brother a scientist and his nephew uh go on a fantastical journey uh to uh the uh to the same go on a fantastical journey uh To the center of the earth, the same one as in Jules Verne's novel. Oh, good. good. Mm. I like that. That's, give it to him if it's in there. Give it's it to him if he's in there. No, no, no. I would say you guys pretty much got him the same. Um, we always do. There was only really one detail that was even a little bit different. And uh, yeah, I think you I think you guys, each of you had like one or two words that you got more right than the other one. Um and there's not really anything to guess, except um, I do think it's interesting. Neither of you mentioned the mountain guide who was named in the, in the summary. I was thinking, but yeah, but I should have done that. So I assumed that uh, an IMDb summary. Well, you said the talisman people are from 400 years ago, so I assume they didn't really care about women. Mm, they don't, but mountain guides are very important to them because that is how they traverse our, you know, our earth, which was all connected, you see. Uh, before the continents all split 400, up 400 years, years ago, ago. Right, yeah, yeah. things things changed pretty quickly uh, because of the uh, talismans, and they don't teach you that in history class or tectonic mm-hmm. class, or whatever the fuck, wherever you would learn this in, in tectonic school. <laughs> I love tectonic but, um, class; it's my favorite yeah, one. For being honest, tectonic. when you're I mean, teaching it's the best your one. college class that appears to consist entirely of high schoolers, nobody gives a shit about that class, man. That is a that is a pass fail tectonic class. And I'm who would be surprised, right? If you saw that teacher's house, you'd be like, he doesn't grade these tests. He can <laughs> barely tie his shoes. Like this guy is a mess. Um, but yeah, no. So here's the here's the summary. I'll give it to you. Uh, on a quest to find out what happened to his missing brother, a scientist, his nephew, and their mountain guide discover a fantastic and dangerous lost world in the center of the earth. So uh, you were both about the same. I'd say Dickens was or DJS was a little bit better. Uh, just because they didn't have the thing that Diggins put at the end of his, but uh, they're about the same. Um, So we're going to go to trivia. Very excited about this. Huzzah! Uh, Yeah. Um, Now, uh, I, you know, this is, it's IMDb trivia. Anybody can add it. This might be a big lie, but I think Mm -hmm. it's kind of funny. So I'm going to do it. Uh, And it seems right. Like, I think this is correct. Um, uh, oh wait, this is so much better. Okay, okay, okay. This is this is great, and this is actually probably true. Okay, 
So about 17 minutes into the movie, according to this trivia, uh, Hannah tells Trevor that she will charge him how much money an hour to guide him through the whole thing. Uh, Hannah being the mountain guide and Trevor being uh, Brennan Fraser's character. Uh, we'll start with Diggins, and this is a multi-part question, but let's do this part first. How much is she charging him? So I actually took this as one of my notes, so I know okay. the answer oh, exactly. She says okay. 5,000 krona. That's right. Very good. Uh, at the time of the film's release, how much was that in USD? Ooh, okay. Anybody want to guess? I also looked this up because Come I was curious. On. Okay. I what believe uh, from what I looked up, uh, and I don't know if it was today's dollars or then dollars, so it might be slightly different, but it's about $36. So that's probably then's dollars, cause, or today's dollars, because then it was more. Um, not that much more, though. Well, like a little okay. bit more, but not like an astronomical. It was $65 US. Um this is the question. This is the final question, though. If he was to pay in rolls of quarters, as his nephew suggested, that would be approximately how many rolls of quarters per hour? That is the that is the trivia question that I think is okay. so fun. How here. many um, rolls of quarters per hour? That's right. And are we taking the thirty six number at like face value? Sixty five dollars USD. Or sixty five dollars. So, okay. How many yeah. rolls of quarters? 5,000 krona, and then, yeah, the time of film's release. Uh, Diggins, many, okay. do you want to start? Um, 11. Okay. BJ? I have a clarifying question. Okay. Is it, like, rounded to the nearest whole number? Is like, it's is, not. Is it... But, you know... It's I'll and it's not prices right rules so I'll, I'll I'll say fourteen I'll say fourteen you can say fourteen okay um and I think like I, there is like a standard how much a roll of quarter is uh usually um I thought I knew you we'll did see. uh and uh the the person who is the most correct is Diggins <sighs> uh because a traditional roll of quarters is ten dollars. It's uh, which means it would be six point five rolls of quarters per hour would be how many quarters I thought it was get. I did some quick estimation and thought it was about six, but mm. I was closer and that's what matters. Yep. You were closer. So I'm gonna say uh, Diggins, you win it. Uh wins that yeah. question or the whole kit and kaboodle? I'm gonna say the whole thing because I think he I think he got yeah, both of them. Because he did you his know, research. And, the only other question I was gonna ask, which I'll ask anyway, and if right. DJ, if you can manage to get this heads up, then you can maybe tie it Fine. or something, I'll, but you I'll, won't. I'll, I'll do I'll do the golden ball. Sure. Let's go. According to this, according to this uh, IMDB page, the dinosaur saliva, spoilers, uh there's dinosaur saliva in this uh which I, I guess I would consider a spoiler because it's not in the poster or anything like that. That's true. Uh, like, I was kind of surprised when I the, saw these guys show up. It's in oh, the sure, 150-year-old yeah. book, so. Mm. Well, I wonder if this is in the book because the dinosaur saliva in this movie was made up of a mixture of three things. Okay. Uh, DJ, can you give me those three things? I, okay, three things. I'm going to say um, p- pudding. Uh, am I already wrong? <laughs> I just keep going. I'll tell you. Fine. When, when uh, pudding, uh, silly putty, and uh, sprite. Way Diggins, do you want to take a shot at it? Um, I'm gonna go with vinegar, baby oil, and baby oil. Mm, oh, you did, well. did you look at it? It is it I, has got a very oily quality. That's what uh R. Kelly should have said he was doing. No, no. P. Diddy. That's what P. Diddy should have said he was doing. Wrong <laughs> sex criminal. Sorry guys. Yeah. Uh, Mixing vinegar, up my sex cr- Baby oil and water. Okay. Well, technically I will I do think DJ got closer, but not that much closer. I mean, he got more close. He definitely was closer, but not so close that I'm like, that actually deserves a win. Right. I think uh, yeah, it is a mixture fine. of hair gel, oh. peat moss, oh. and 7-Up. 
So you said Sprite, and wow. that's not Seven Up. You know, that's technically a different thing. I uh, can't. Uh, those are different. Those are oh, different yeah, products. Man. They're not you know? even technically the same thing. So, uh, yeah. But I think hair gel is the one that I can see. I don't really know what peat moss looks like. I would assume it no has moss? like a, like yeah, right. So like, like that, but more peat. <laughs> and what is it? Is it dark? Bastard. Like, right? It's like a brownish color. I would assume, and. I kind of remember the saliva looking more clear, but maybe there wasn't that much peat moss in it. Um, I will say that the first time it comes down, I thought it was poop. I'm like, did you just get pooped oh, really? on? Yeah, it's because it is what? a little brownish. So I'm telling you, I'm, oh, okay. I'm telling you, the first one, it's like, oh, I think. You but got it's so on. viscous. Yeah. Well, you know, oh. depends on what he's eating, I guess. What do they got down there? You know, White Castle, maybe. Maybe <laughs> comes be. out, comes out. Well, well, we all know that. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to say Diggins wins uh, because okay. DJ, you said seven up or Sprite instead of seven up. Yeah, if fair. you said seven up, I probably would have given it to you. Um, That's fair. That's fair. But, uh, but yeah, I so this. Uh, Diggins as the winner of the IMDb summary this week, you get to say first what you think of journey to the center of the earth. Wow, guys journey to the center of the earth. You know, we did journey two with the mm. rock. He has the thunder cookie and oh yeah a lot of other stuff happened in that movie michael kane um, was there michael and he fucking yeah. hated the rock that was so fun <laughs> uh journey one with brendan fraser and anita bream and still josh hutcherson what mm-hmm. is there to say guys it's fine i guess i don't know it's a kids adventure movie from 2008 with bad CGI and weird 3D effects. But like, I don't know. It's not a bad movie per se. Uh, I think it mostly accomplishes what it sets out to do, which is to be a kind of adventure movie vaguely inspired by Jules Verne's novel. Uh, I think Brendan Fraser has a... a I don't know. I mean, like, you know, he came off the mommy movies. He knew how to do this sort of thing. Uh, I don't know that it's necessarily his best work, but I think there's enough charm there that you can sort of get it. Yeah. So basically, I mean, I didn't like it very much because I'm not a child from 2008, but if I had watched it as a child in 2008, I probably would have had a good time. So it's hard for me to be like upset about not liking it. You know what I mean? Mm. I I just I just don't have a lot to say. It's fine. It's a totally fine movie that's not really for me, but isn't trying to be. Uh, what about you, DJ? What did you think? Yeah, I I think you pretty much nailed it. You know, I I, I will say, given given the context of the mostly nitpicking cinematic universe, you know, we've been trudging through a lot of shit lately, and I I don't know what it is, and and it's probably just me, but. I kind of like Brendan Fraser in this movie. Like, I, I, I think his, I'm like, ah, you mm. Brendan Fraser, you funny guy with your weird yelping that you just can't get away from in your action movies. And like, the Hutch is the Hutch. I, honestly, pretty good child actor. Doesn't come off like super annoying, but maybe it's because like I know him and I have that familiarity. But um, I didn't hate him because you've seen Five Nights at Freddy's and you're mm-hmm. like, well, I know where this is going. So like, exactly I right. In the it's, beginning of the journey. It can only and- be good. You're probably like caught up in the spirit of the season the same way that like if you saw right. a Christmas song or listen to a Christmas song in like, you know, March or something, you'd be like, Ugh. but in Hutchtober watching a Josh Hutcherson movie is a real treat. True, I feel right at home. True. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it just makes sense to me. Right. So we you do got to remember the reason for the season is yep. Josh yeah. Hutcherson. And, you know, Seth Myers is in about two and a half minutes. Isn't he fun? Isn't he fun? Mm. This big old I was measure. surprised to see him. Yeah, me too. It's so, one of his like four movies or something. He does not act very often. And could you believe he's not it? acting in this movie. It's no, just Seth Meyers doing a great <laughs> job. Hanging out. Um, going to pull out some corrections. Mm, uh, he should. There's a lot of I mean, he pretty much goes to Brendan Fraser. He's like, I got a list of corrections for you. Number one. <laughs> Your brother's dead. Number two, all the machines are broken. You know, number three, they're Lego bricks, not Legos. We get it. Uh, he loves talking about Lego bricks. 
but yeah. Um, so, so you know, all, all that being said, I I think it's a uh, yeah, average, fine movie, probably good for the kids. It's it's you know, but but for for me, you know, for for what we've been through, breath of fresh air, it's breath of fresh air. It's you know, it's kind of funny when they're flying plummeting to the earth in half of a dino skull oh you know God. it's funny when uh uh brendan frazier uh no look backhands like a big old uh, uh venus fly trap like oh man yeah crazy um <laughs> so funny so I, I i think it's an enjoyable watch and you know what like this isn't a commercial but you know if you want to throw the kids in something new with you know the 350 rented on Amazon Prime. What more could you ask for? What more could you ask for? So, um, that those are my thoughts. Dana, what did you think of this uh, masterpiece of cinema? I'm sure some people think that. Well, I guess I'm going to be the lone voice of reason on this podcast. This thing was hard to watch. I oh, no, man, like no, it. Come on. It looks so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was not good. No, uh, no. I like Brendan Fraser usually, and I don't think – I think he's okay in this. I don't think he's that much better. <laughs> like, I, I think this is a role where, like, I think The Rock could have pretty much done all the stuff he's doing here, whereas, like, I think Brendan Fraser traditionally has, like, a charisma – in in something like the uh, the mummy or even like a dumb movie like bedazzled or whatever we're like or is that what it called no but what's that movie called bewitched it, it's not called bewitched though right because that's that's bewitched bewitched is the movie oh i thought you were saying like he was the show in the bewitched movie no he's in that movie with with uh jennifer or uh excuse me elizabeth hurley where she's the devil and he gets wishes and he wants to be like a basketball player i think it might be called bedazzled but if it is that's a weird name for it because that was probably right before bedazzling was a thing. Um, oh, yeah, it is called bedazzled. Uh, but anyway, you know, he back in the 2000s, early 2000s, late 90s, when he was a huge star, you know, he was doing shit like this and it was it was all working. Um, and I think this is OK, but I don't think this uses him pretty well. I don't think Hutcherson. I think Hutcherson is fine. Um, and I think the what I have would have to assume is like an actor that's big in Sweden or whatever, or Iceland. Um I guess probably Iceland, uh, but like she's probably fine as well. But like this is a movie that is a feast for the senses, like 3D every everywhere you look and it looks bad. So I hate <laughs> that part of it. And I don't want to say bad because the people did a bad job. I think the way I want to describe it and the way I want to describe it, a lot of the bad CGI or CGI that we have described as bad is it's just not ready for prime time. Like mm -hmm. they shouldn't have put it out, but it's just like what they had. So it was what it was. I do think it really suffers from the fact that like it's dinosaurs. And like if there was ever a thing that it was like, you know what? They just can't do it in CGI. It's impossible to do. Sure. They couldn't do dinosaurs. Like it, it's the one example of like how dinosaurs or how like CGI can be adapted really well. It 10 15 years before this movie came out. So well, when those didn't look good. A lot of that Jurassic Park work is actually practical. That's fair. But the, um, I do remember specifically the, uh, the CGI in Jurassic Park was like, was groundbreaking. And uh, like those big shots where like the T-Rex roars and the, the little sign falls down. They made the, they made the people that uh, worked on the practical effects go, we're about to be extinct because of how good the CGI is. And um, you know, they, 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 and this doesn't have that much, you know, of a T Rex in it, and it still looks like the T Rexes did in Transformers Beast Wars, where it's just, <laughs> you know, big T Rex shaped squares, one color, just charging at the screen. And well, I got rough. news for you, Nando. There's zero T Rexes in this movie. Is that not what that's supposed to be? Is it really? It's, I mean, it basically is a T Rex in terms of how they designed it, but apparently. According to the filmmakers, it's a Giganotosaurus, the same oh. dinosaur that's the Joker in the last Jurassic World movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember that one. That's cool. Okay. okay. Uh, and that looked good in the Jurassic World movie, but, you know, they had bazillions of dollars. Like, that's the thing with this movie. I could be convinced this movie was made on, like, a $50 million budget, and then I'd be like, yeah, that's kind of, that's impressive. Uh, but also, like, just 2008 CGI was not although to be fair i don't remember when this came out specifically in the year i'm looking at it now uh let's see journey to 
the center of the earth. Uh, it was released in July of 2008. Summer release. Summer blockbuster. Yeah. Wow. Mm. So this came out the same year as Indiana Jones 4, which did, or yeah, 4, which didn't look great, but like had a lot of CGI and looked better than this and obviously cost a lot of money. Iron Man 1, which looked amazing and like all that CGI has aged super well. And Speed Racer, a movie that is nothing but CGI and looks great. Like none of these, it's, if this was made in 1998, I'd be like, well, yeah. That's all we could come up with. But 2008, it's just, it's not good. And uh, so, yeah, that's the the big problem with it. There's no time where you can just kind of like forget. You can't go like enjoy the movie and then, you know, a scene where they're just sitting around. Because even those have like some weird bullshit background (laughs) or something. Like it sucks. What are you Uh, talking about? All the green screen scenes in this movie are impeccable. Yeah, it's rough, man. And like I I'm sure it's not the people's fault, but like like the animators fall for being like lazy or it's anything. The I'm sure they were for not being in this movie. He would have got him in true. line. He, he the rock would have mm-hmm. taken care of business. Yeah, he would have been like anyone who does the CGI bad. I'm going <laughs> to give him a thunder cookie. <laughs> I'm going to give him I'm going to give him a thunder cookie and something to wash it down with, if you know what I mean. A little rock special, <laughs> rock special water or something. Oh, um, <laughs> Dwayne's special stuff. <laughs> secret yeah, stuff. Secret stuff. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Now I'm will, imagining the version <laughs> of Space Jam where Michael yeah. Jordan pisses in a bottle and it's like, mm. drink oh, this, God. it'll make you better at basketball. I mean, like, to, I mean, to be fair... Bugs Bunny is the one who makes the Michael secret stuff, so it's very possible that he just peed in the in the thing. I, I think we saw him fill it up from water, but I don't know what bunny pee tastes like, especially not cartoon bunny. Maybe it tastes like water. You know, maybe you could be tricked. So yeah, I didn't like this movie. It's not good. Also, I think the plot is just like really nothing, and like it just kind of goes. It's a lot of like, oh my god, we gotta go over there. And then they go over there and then they they make like see a thing and go, that's incredible. Yeah. And then there's got something over there now to the point where like halfway through the movie, the revelation shows up that you kind of figure would be at the end of the movie. Yeah. And so much movie after that revelation. Yeah, it just keeps going. And uh, yeah, so yeah, part of it's weird. But, uh, you know, it's not the worst movie we've ever done. And for a movie that came out in 2008, like I don't think I'm not surprised this wasn't a big hit. I'm kind of shocked this got a sequel. Uh, at, at the box office for this, do either of you guys want to take a guess? Because I looked it up. Oh, eight dollars. Uh, well, you're surprised it got a sequel. Was it like six? I'm million? surprised it got a sequel from looking at it, not from the box. <laughs> oh, the actual okay, bo- okay, okay, like, okay. So box office. Oh, I'll say like I don't know, a hundred fifty. No, a hundred twenty million dollars. And just for for clear, like for you know to base it against it how much do you think it costs to make oh my god 90 million no the cgi how much was uh 60 uh 40 million dollars diggins what about you i'm gonna say it made 80 million and cost 50 million Okay, so DJ is way more in the ballpark in both numbers. Well, not in both numbers, because Diggins was technically closer. Uh, I will say DJ got, for a second, DJ had the budget right, but then he backed off oh, of he it. jumped off, uh, damn it. Yeah, it cost $60 million to make. Ah, so wow, it was that expensive, huh? Not and nothing. What, what'd it make? Uh, so it made, uh, let me just pull this up again, to do, do, uh, according to this, $244 million. So. Damn. Yeah, so of course they got a sequel. I'm so yeah, exactly. Like I'm sure everybody looking at the movie was like, "But are you guys sure this movie?" And then they were like, "Yeah, that one." So yeah, they yeah, we know what we want. Wow, that's pretty wild. But I know I don't know what the second one made, but I I I imagine eventually they stopped making money. Otherwise, they'd keep making them. Nope the the second one also made a lot of money. So the second one made more money than the first. Uh, well, that was even even just like ten years ago, a movie yeah. that was like really successful could just be a movie that was successful and then you stopped. Well, how about this? Let's do the budget for the second one and the oh, and the box office for the gosh. second one. Uh, 
digging so you can go now are we certain we didn't do this in the podcast about the second one i mean if we we did i don't remember it from that so might as well start over uh Uh, okay i'll say that one you said it also made a lot of money so i'm gonna say that one made 200 million off a budget of i'm gonna say they upped the budget because it was successful this one cost 90 million dj yeah, I'll, I'll I'll say you guessed two hundred million. It made Diggins. Mm-hmm. I'll be interesting and say it made two hundred twenty-five million, and it cost a hundred and ten to make. Okay, so you're both kind of in the ballpark on the budget. It cost eighty million to make, so Diggins was closer. Uh, and you're both way off on the box office. Three hundred thirty-five million dollars. God damn! I'm shocked they haven't dug this thing out of mothballs for three. Like seriously, though. They have well, made now, sequels to m- movies that were made way less money. Um, would it now be then. Josh Hutcherson is an adult and his yeah, nephew? Yeah, he takes over. Or whatever? Yeah. Well, what? be, yeah, it beats the three of them. It would be either The Rock, Hutcherson, and then this new third generation, or Frazier, Hutcherson, third generation. Do, do we know why Brendan Fraser didn't come back for the second one? So I know he got a bad injury when filming The Mummy 3. Okay. which I think they made in about 2010. Um, okay. And that's part of why he took a real big break from acting. Um, oh, yeah, Mummy 3 comes out in 2008, so right around this time. Oh, shit. And, okay. uh, yeah, so- and I think he was also, like, depressed and stuff, so it was not a great time for him. But I, I do think specifically, like, there was some sort of really bad, like, I think he had just, over the course of his life, had a lot of, like, fallen on his back during some you know uh special effects shot or something and they just started adding up right around 2008 so yeah so because my memory is bad what is the relation between the rock and hutcherson in um the second one stepdad stepfather yeah stepdad okay right much like he's uh because this was his this was the days when you know like tooth fairy and this the Rock was the yeah. was the stepdad who the kids didn't like. I mean, because they were too cool for school. We so we see the father very, very, very briefly at the beginning of this movie. Yeah, um, it right. So I mean, from the mom's perspective, huge upgrade. Oh huge yeah, huge upgrade, <laughs> like incredible. Well, now you say that, and like maybe the Rock is a more attractive man. You know. It's, it, you know, it depends on your individual tastes. We'll say the Rock's an attractive man. Yeah. I, I don't yeah, think yeah. that's controversial to say. But you do got to deal with all the piss bottles. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And, like, you have to be making him seven pounds of salmon every day or whatever. Or cod. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. Cod, nice. yeah. That is that's that is a big problem. Plus, he wakes up really early, you know, with his stupid app. His rock and clock. Can have yeah. Anymore. The rock clock wakes you up at, like, 4 a.m. with some sort of, like, little virtue about... <laughs> the hard work and ethics of something. So, you know, this is about, about hustle and grind. Yeah. I would say, I mean, for me, looking at these two men without knowing anything about who the rock actually is, like just watching this movie, this guy is described as the greatest dad that ever lived, according to everybody. And like, oh, he was the best brother and stuff. So maybe it just was cool as hell. I don't know. But and again, the I rock, mean, like, if you didn't have like, bad memories of a loved one then i feel like after they die it's all like man they were amazing they were the you know like as long as your relationship was good you're not gonna say anything bad about them it's true and compared to brendan fraser he was probably like pretty good because he didn't have a pile of clothes every two feet in his apartment so he really (laughs) seemed like he had it together and uh and in 2008 you know the standard just wasn't as high remember 2008 ish uh, the term metrosexual. Remember that? Kind of. <laughs> Which was like... It, well, this was back for, in the Queer Eye days, Nando, where the very yeah. idea of mm-hmm. like being together and dressing well and all that was gay-coded. It was, yeah. Metrosexual, for people that don't know, was like the, the this term of like a straight man, but one who gets his hair cut and stuff. And it was like, wow, can you... We need to have a term for that because it is so such an incredible idea and yeah it was around the time of the show straight uh queer eye for the straight guy which now i think is just called queer eye uh but exists again in netflix i think 
um, next to probably the electric robot or whatever the fuck that movie we just talked about was called the electric state, hopefully some sort of crossover. Um, but yeah, the idea that a man would like style their hair unheard of and, uh, the, uh, so yeah, the, maybe that was what the dad was. He was the first metrosexual and no one could figure him out. They were just like, this man is such a mystery and enigma because Brendan Fraser, there's points late in the movie where he's been under the earth for, I guess an hour or however long this whole movie takes. Like, I don't know. Did they like go to sleep during it? They can't be there for a whole day, right? I don't think they ever go to sleep, but I mean, when you consider the distance they have traveled underground, right. it must have taken multiple days. You would figure. Uh, so then this guy is underground for like two, two days, maybe three days. Uh, and he looks pretty much exactly the same as he looked when he was just a teacher. So this character has like a fine layer of dirt on him at all times. He is the opposite of the metrosexual man. Um, <laughs> Which yeah. is why he's sexy and cool. Yeah. So, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves with all this stuff because DJ has to tell us what happened in the movie Journey <sighs> to the Center right. of the Earth. I do, which is a bummer because, you know, I don't want to, but, you know. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's how they get you. This is how they get you. It's wild how they do that. Um, okay. Journey to the center of the earth. So we open with um a what honestly this movie opens like wild. So it's what like, an open. Yeah, it's insane. Top down, cameras coming down, and then we see like a fossil of some kind of I don't I don't even know what you call this. I want to say tri trilobite. Yeah, tri something like that. A word they say out loud in the movie, trilobite. Trilobite. They, yeah. they might say it. I don't they I don't know. Do. That we, Later, not now. But in the middle of the movie, uh, Brandon Fraser says, when well, they're eating one, he's like, ancient trilobite, got to keep your strength up. That's right. I yeah, that I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Anyway, so, and then, and then we see a fossil, and then we see a purple CGI one kind of crawl over, but like it's, it's oh big. My right? it's, God. it's a big one. Horrible. <laughs> Just horrible looking. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, um, we know we're in for something. We, we yeah. know that this is going to be the start of something. And, and then to whom do our wandering guys appear? There's like a guy. He's being chased by a, a big, I guess, not a T Rex, whatever the thing Diggin said earlier. Giganotosaurus. Um, <laughs> he's not a real Jurassic World fan, I guess. Never claimed Jurassic to be. Jurassic World 3. I, I don't want to, I don't want to hang that yoke around my neck. That's, that's not a thing I want. Um, mm. and, and and this guy's like being chased and it's like oh my god and then there's like this he has to jump this kind of this there, 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 there's a hole not a hole but there's a, a, a like a mini like cavern or whatever you gotta, you gotta jump it you gotta make the like jump a fisher like a like a tectonic yeah. plate almost that yeah right, right and and he runs and he goes to make the jump but he kind of shorts and he grabs the ledge and he falls into lava and dies and and then and we hear oh we hear we hear him shout a name What's the name we hear him shout? Um, fucking, what's this guy's name? The Rock. No, I don't remember. Is <laughs> it Brendan! Tell Brendan, my wife not yeah. to marry The Rock! <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is his name? Trevor. Well, Trevor, thank you. In this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we hear the Trevor! Like, oh, and then he dies. Really funny, the in retrospect, that that's the name he says. Mm-hmm. Wait, wh Why? Because he has a wife. A oh, God. And yeah. a son. Like, he's got other people in his life. But, well, like, again, to be fair, what will we learn about this? How does this, what happens next? Uh, so, yeah, then Brendan Fraser wakes up and is like, oh, Mark! And then, you know. Yeah. I guess it's, 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 it's implied that this is either a vision or a dream or something that he's having, which, dead on, considering you would never guess there's dinosaurs at the center of the earth. But <laughs> Yeah. That's well, true. <laughs> in in his defense, apparently th his brother yeah. did go around talking about how he thought the Jules Verne novel Journey to the Center of the Earth was real. Mm -hmm. He's a huge fan. He's a huge yeah. fan. He was a Vernian, as they say. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Just a word that, that I learned gets, in the last one. I think that gets brought up in this movie like once and then never again. And then yeah. is really important next movie for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so, uh, okay. We learn that Brendan Fraser is a university professor where he teaches like 
tectonic plate stuff. <laughs> yeah, tectonic 101. <laughs> An entry level tectonic plate class. Yeah, you know, you know when you guys remember when we had to take our tectonics requirement when we were studying in school. Well, I slept through mine. You know, much like yeah, I couldn't in this school. Couldn't focus. You know, Mm -hmm. too much going on. Um, yeah, golly gee, and uh, he has a lab at the university that seems like it's failing, and it was his brother's lab. Um, and and it's being shut down by Seth Meyers and his giant tape measure. And uh, <laughs> yeah. it's quite the it's got a lab with lots of dimensions, width and depth. Uh also, do you remember what the name of the lab is or what the what the like kind of a- the, a- absolutely not. There's no chance. The study of it's just the Maxwell Anderson Center for the Study of Plate Tectonics. This guy went all in on tectonics real real hard. Tectonics being a I guess a thing that people are still looking into, but like I got I don't know, man. <laughs> You think is this a real thing? Do you think there's one of these? I anywhere? have no. D- Dickens would know. He's our Probably. you know resident. Probably. I mean, the study of tectonics is still there's still a lot we don't understand about how and why they move, and you know, mm. predicting the movement of tectonic plates is very important for understanding like earthquakes and such. So I would imagine that there's labs like this. It's kind of like magnets, me, right? What are they? What are they? Yeah. What are they? I guess for me, I would just assume this is like a room in the geology lab or something or like the weather. lab. Right. It's not his whole lab. You would have a whole lab for this feels a little much to me, but maybe it is, you know, someone. And if any of you guys in the discord work at the tectonic plates lab or whatever, (laughs) let us know. Yeah, and we hope we, we hope it's doing well. We we hope Seth Myers is in there now, shutting it down. Oh for, my God. We don't even know what he, he's replacing it with. He's just storage. Like, shutting this. Sh-. They're out of storage oh, right. space storage. in the That's university. Right. Yeah. That's how he needs to know how much space there is. Right. <laughs> um. So. Uh, he's like, no, that's, you can't do that, whatever. He's like, I, I got, I got, uh, like, my three remaining sensors from 29 are, like, going off in, like, these three areas. It was, what, Hawaii, um, somewhere in South America, I want to say, and... Yeah. Uh, yes. Burma. Wow. Hmm. Not what? in South America at all. Oh, man. Come on, like, I... If you had said any South American country, I would have been like, fair enough. But I know it was, it was, it was a B one. It was Bolivia. Bolivia. If you you had said like Chile, Argentina, Paraguay, I'd have been like, yeah, okay. No, but I I knew it was, I knew it was B. Like I knew Mm. it was a B one. Brazil. I would have been like, yeah, all right. Well, Brazil would have been good. Yeah. I should have been Brazil. Burma. Uh, Burma. A country in Asia. (laughs) <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, because I always, I always think of my favorite. Also, document. not called that anymore. Yeah, definitely not in two thousand eight. Let's maybe well, this movie was written in like uh, you know nineteen seventy six or something. No, wasn't the, that this from, is the Burma cut? No, wasn't that from uh, the Dark Knights? Like we were, we were in Burma. We we're looking for for gems the size of a grapefruit. Well, he's right. talking about that his days in the, the SAS. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which was decades ago. Burma has been Myanmar but, for the past 35 years. But he said that in 2008. Because yeah, he's an he's old man, an DJ. Old man. We can't get him to change. <laughs> also, he said that in... Well, yeah, he said in 2008 about, like you were saying, this this um thing. But my, my uh, uh, like touchstone for this is always Seinfeld, where... Jay Peterman goes to Burma, but it's Myanmar. But he says it'll always be Burma to me because he's like, I guess that's what it used to be. So that's a uh, this that's that's another reason to watch Seinfeld. Funniest show, funnier than Friends, and teaches you some geography every so often. Yeah, it's okay. So pretty fine. Good. And Jason Alexander's uh, a robot now, so also very important. Happy Peanut Man or something. Okay, a lot of reasons. Yeah. Uh, where were we? Um, uh, we're like Burma. two minutes into this movie. He's <laughs> <laughs> computer yeah, screen has a couple countries. Although you still got to give me that third one. Yeah, what's the third oh, one? Uh, pff, I don't remember. Is it like Mongolia. Japan or something? Mongolia. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you know, very, very, very important. Uh, okay. Uh, so he's like, uh, oh, it's all that matters. So, uh, whatever. He goes home. He's sad. He has a message from his sister. He's supposed to watch his nephew this weekend. Oh. I don't know. Not just the weekend, DJ. Yeah, a whole week or something. It seems like it's unclear how long this is going to take. She says 10 days. 
Fox. Oh, okay. Oof, ah, that's a lot. At, at one point, Brendan Fraser's like, it'll be a nice couple days, or four, five days, or ten days. And I was like, do you not know? Or I don't think I so. I think that was him trying to be like, oh, let's cut this a little short. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Get out of here. Um... So it goes okay. We gotta, uh, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get rid of the child because because he's uh, he 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 has to watch the child and it's frustrating. Um, so I'm trying to think how I could like like zoom past some of this. So okay, um, he is like the the kid's there and it's Josh and he's like shitty. He's like angry. He doesn't like his uncle because he's like an edgy kid. And I guess he lost his dad. And I like I guess that's part of it, kind of, but like it's not really made clear yet that the, like that's where some of his angst is coming from although it it's definitely extremely is. clear i mean is it's it definitely, though it's clear i think characters in movies like this have had fathers that weren't disappeared in gener- journey to the center of the earth uh and this is just how you wrote a kid in 2008 like this is right? just but like standard the- like i like computer and not book yeah go yeah. away like old first man real interaction it's Brandon Fraser opening the box and being like, oh, this is all your old dad stuff. And Josh Hutcherson going like, oh, really? My dad? My mom mm-hmm. doesn't talk about my dad. And it's like, okay. Yeah. I get it. All right. Yeah. All right. So fair enough. So that that's that's our character. Um, so they're 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 looking through I've I forget what like the triggering mechanism is for like so he's like looking in like the notes of his like old of his brother's stuff and like he wrote three the three places where the three sensors are currently going off like written in the book he's like oh I guess this is something um, uh yeah kind of it's that they go on the computer and find the fourth sensor is active even though it shouldn't be well right that's- DJ's right about that's why he goes to check the sensors oh okay I see. Yeah. So, but right, yes, and then they go to the computer. It's like, oh wow, a sensor is still working. That's wild. Um, and then they kind of do some like, uh, oh right, they they're like, we're gonna go on a plane, even though they don't fully know where they're going yet, right? Because they don't solve the puzzle of like the place to go till they're on the plane. Yeah, that's they know they they know where they're going because it's a it's a geolocated sensor, but on. On the plane flight over, they see they figure out the name of this guy, and they're like, "We should check in with him, right? right. Because your dad might yeah. have talked to him." Yeah, right. I guess like there's not a whole lot of planes to Iceland. This isn't, you know, you don't get, it, like there's plenty a lot of planes to Iceland, but it's not like they're the, all to you, know, you no fly in there, in Iceland. That's not in Reykjavik. Yeah. Also, does he Google on a plane? Well, yeah, yeah I mean, that's the, that's the, the PSP. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's why they got rid of those. Is because Coco in flight Wi Fi was like, "We're not making money on this thing. We gotta take the PSP." He's googling at thirty thousand feet, DJ. Yeah, that's the kind of power you get with a Sony product. Bullshit, man! <laughs> I didn't figure this out yet. We need it back. <laughs> You see, that's why the Vita failed. They took out the mm. Googling on planes feature. Yeah, because you needed those big stupid discs, you know? That's that's what the disc was doing. It was connecting to the internet. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. So anyway. He, he Googles 30,000 feet to figure out where they're going. Uh so they 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 go they get to where they're going, they go to the house, and uh there's a woman there. And it's like, hey, do you know, like this, or the, is this a research center? And she's like, oh, this is my dad. He's gone. Um, it's like, well, we're looking for this place. Did you and another thing I would love a crack at? This guy's name. Come oh. on. Stop it. Stop it. Stop yeah, it. Stop it. I mean, I'm going to do it. Starts with an S, I think. Because, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I'm going to do it. Um, Skjordshin Skrakershkin. Wow. Oh could not have been more wrong. I could have been more wrong. How dare you? I know there's Sigurd a P Bjorn and a B in Dyerson. it. Yeah. All right. All right. Also, DJ, I think you undersold. So this man is like an old scientist guy. Mm-hmm. And they open up the, they, they go to his, first of all, what they think is a lab. And it's just like a little, yeah, a little, little log cabin. Yeah. Uh, and a supermodel opens the door or something. It's an insane. Oh, this is that same guy. This is like something totally different. You would assume you got the wrong place. Yeah. But. Right. Uh, but no, they, they 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 go for it. Um, so they're like, "Oh, we're looking for this place." She's like, uh, "You shouldn't go because you'll fucking die." Um, 
and they're like well what what like could you be our mountain guide and she's like all right i'll be your mountain guide i guess because i'm gonna make some money the whatever units we discussed prior five thousand krona an hour yeah 650 a very reasonable rate like (laughs) you got that brendan you you got that i'm assuming not even in quarters you probably have that in cash but, yeah, they act like it's crazy, but then when you actually do the math, it's like, that's not an unusual, that's not like a crazy rate for a mountain guide. Like, yeah. that's dangerous work. It seems like these characters didn't go to get money. They didn't get, like, local cash before they started this part of the trip, which is insane. But they also don't know have any, um, like, Icelandic uh, phrases or, like, any books. We're really that's lucky true. that this character speaks English at all. Yeah, th- there was Now, no to luck. be fair to them... Iceland is one of those countries where, like, yeah. nearly everyone you meet will speak English. That's fair. Well, that's, that's good. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, Most of the Scandinavian countries are like that because nobody is going to know their languages, and they know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I kind of feel I, bad for every, them. I mean, you know, it's, it's, like, they obviously use Icelandic amongst themselves, and it's still right. a very alive and vibrant language, but... They learn English in school, and nearly everyone you speak to will be able to speak at least some English because, you know, you're not going to be able to rely on Icelandic anywhere outside of Iceland. I mean, that 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 makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Uh, okay, so where were we? Uh, they hired this woman for right, six fifty an hour. Yep, and then Mountain they kind of go on their mountain trek um, and just, I don't know how much this detail matters, but I'm just going to mention it anyway. They like kind of discuss who gets like first dibs at her, which is like yep. kind of fucking insane. <laughs> they're going to t- gonna take turns, but obviously someone has to go first. Uh, so <laughs> they do call it. It's wild. I do. I want to say in fairness <laughs> to Brendan Fraser's character, Josh Hutcherson says that. And Brendan Fraser mm-hmm. is like, are you serious? You're like 13. Yeah. Well, he's like, are you serious? You're 13? Obviously, I get tips. Yeah. Obviously, I get to <laughs> fuck our guy. <laughs> if you were older, sure. Technically, you would get you would get her, but I get her now. <laughs> it's fun, though, because that comes back. And uh, I was shocked when, she, when that comes back. Uh, and I was like, oh, they are gonna, good. Good for her. <laughs> She's on board. I mean, to be fair, he's Brendan Fraser. So, you know, it's he's a handsome man. Maybe, you know. I mean, he's no The Rock. He's no The Rock. Well, he's I don't know. He's he's a more he's a more lovable The Rock, perhaps, you know. And especially well, this is 2008, in 2008, Nando, there's no one more lovable than The Rock right now. Yeah, this this Except is maybe true. John Cena. Ooh, remember that meme? That was a fun meme. But uh and also this is before The Rock turned into a big giant like man made of muscle and stone and stuff. He was before like a human man who you could conceivably hug and like touch without hurting yourself, you know? So that was, that's something Brendan Fraser, this Brendan Fraser has on the rock from journey to the mysterious Island. Um, that is true. Uh, so they, they, they go on their journey and then they're kind of like, they're, they're in a place where it's like a lightning storm kind of happens uh and then there's basically like uh they, they get into a cave and there's like a lightning strike and then it collapses but they're fine well they're fine but they're trapped and it's like oh my god we're trapped uh so they have to make their way through the cave uh you know one thing leads to another da 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 and um they start falling in, in like in, in a hole and they're falling for like a really long time like a crazy long time like they're just having a full-on conversation while they're falling it's it's kind of insane and it's like oh i guess just we're like that spy kids 3d scene just like spy kids yeah oh no that's spy kids 2 that happens then sorry that's right yeah and i i guess i i, I should have mentioned but like you know like their their plan is like oh maybe we find like a mine shaft or something but like the the idea of a center earth thing has kind of been brought up but you know that's that's not what they're like looking for they're looking for a way out and they fall down a hole um and it's like well, do you know part- do you remember why they fall down the hole Mm. I don't remember the exactly why they fall down the hole. Well, because it turns out they're standing on Muscovite. Oh, yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And DJ, you left out the most important part, which was all the trailers for this movie. Like, I'm shocked it's not on the poster, but the 
big cool action scene that takes place before the Muscovite stuff, right? There's a there's a big cool action scene. I mean, I guess big cool is <laughs> is a, you know I have a relative slice about it. If you want to, but wait there's till then. there's a slightly derivative bit. Well, well, yeah, we'll get to it. But something happens between between those. It doesn't matter for the plot. But I, I don't know why I don't remember this. But anyway, so, we'll get there. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll get there. Fair enough. So uh, they're falling, and it's like, oh, well, hopefully we don't, like, fall to our death. And Brendan Fraser's like, it's okay. And I still don't fully understand this. It's like, there's water further we go down. But, like, the water is, like, rising up, so it'll be kind of curved. So it'll be, like, going down a water slide. So we won't plummet to our death. It'll, like, cushion our fall, and then we'll slide down. And the woman's like, oh, but it also might be, like, stalactites, and it might just, like, uh, uh, pierce us and kill us. And he's like, well, maybe that. But luckily, it's not that one. It's the water slide one, thankfully. Wait, it'll be it'll be what, DJ? S- stalagmites? No, is mites yeah. the up yeah. ones? It is. It's, it's not fair ground, that there's yes. down and up ones, mites and tights. Just um, use my helpful mnemonic, which is stalagmites might hang from the ceiling, but they don't. Oh, really? is that, that your helpful mnemonic? <laughs> <laughs> so it is a joke, but also because it's a joke I've made, I remember it and it does help uh, me. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Stalagmites might hang from the ceiling, but don't worry, they don't. Okay. All right. If anyone um, actually needs a mnemonic for this, stalactites are on the top. That's all you need to know. Yeah. And then right? M is isn't the that, other one. Isn't that that's, the one? I believe that's how I was taught it. Um, I think mine uh, mine helps a little bit more. It's a little clearer. <laughs> I was thinking um, like stalactites are too far away yeah i believe Mm. the way this is supposed to work the way brendan fraser posits it is the water is like on the walls as well so the idea is the walls will start like curving down and they'll be able to like get on the walls and like transfer the momentum like a slide so that instead of just hitting the ground and dying they'll like slowly like by sliding along the wall transfer the vertical momentum to horizontal momentum and instead they'd probably still die I was gonna say, yeah oh for sure but it's it, it's not a it's not a completely baseless thing to say sure why mm-hmm. not um so they do that and then they wind up oh my god we're here in the center of the earth oh um, my god we did it <gasps> what's it like um, it's it's like a beach you know there's there's there's, there's some like trees and stuff and uh, there's glowy birds. That's cool. There's birds that glow. Oh, wow. Because um, we're in the earth, I guess. So whatever. Um, so Is it, does it be... remind you of any other movies that this kind of looks like? Because I was shocked that this is how they do the center of the earth in this. They're actually, I, 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 what, what is the one that came to mind for you? The Aquaman movie where he goes to the center of the earth and it's this. Is I it... couldn't oh. believe it. Hmm. It's where the mom okay. is. Secret, secret Nicole uh, Kidman mom is in the center yeah. of the earth. They have to go down and they go there and it's just like a fancy, like, is this, I, I, I imagine during the center of the earth had this, but is that what the Aquaman one is based on? Like the Jules Verne book? Is this a trope oh, in science man. fiction that everybody knows? Because I did not know this. It was before Jules Verne, the hollow earth theory. Mm. Yeah. As it's, we know from Kong vs. Godzilla. As we know. He was yeah. writing based on a thing that was like talked about in Victorian times. So like mm. he didn't come up with it. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. So uh, they um, they, they they kind of explore around. They find they find like not like, like a shed, like a camp with notes. Mm-hmm. And at first they're like, "Oh my god, was this Jules Verne's camp or something?" But then they look at the handwriting of the book they had that that, that was the dad's journal and the handwriting of those notes. Like, oh my god, this was the dad's camp. But then, oh. unfortunately, they find a pile of rocks and it's like, oh, it, it is dead. His dad's dead. Wait, is that what they find? Don't they? I assume they find his body and bury him under the pile of rocks. That is not made clear. Because oh. they DJ, yeah, the pile of rocks is a cairn, obviously. But like, like he didn't know bury that... himself, did he? Or maybe someone did else. Did the birds? Did? Yeah, maybe they <laughs> Snow White did him. It, okay. It is not there unless I forgot it. There's no scene where Brendan Fraser and the crow are like, "Oh my God, this is a dead body!" Right? Like that. Like that's not a scene. I mean, well, she doesn't say the words, "Oh my God, a dead body," but there is a scene where yeah. we see uh, Hannah is her yeah. name. Yeah. Uh, like looks over like something. She like picks up a fl- an old flashlight, looks over, and goes yeah. like. Oh. 
So yeah. like that's pretty heavily implied to be her finding the body. Okay, well, I didn't read that that way. I just thought they found the cairn. <laughs> like, who mm. made the cairn then? I, anyone. <laughs> it could have been anyone. I don't know. The T Rex. What do you mean it yeah. could have been anyone? They're in the center of the earth. Mm. We we don't know who else is there. I don't know. It seems Maybe a lot Michael of Caine are made it. Out. He's been yeah. living there for years and years. We'll learn. <laughs> uh, all right, fine. So anyway, they found his body. Apparently, not the Karen. My mistake. Uh, and they also found a journal where uh the dad Max wrote a very sad note about. Oh, today was by the way Josh Hutcherson's name. His character's name is Sean. Um, he's like, oh, today uh, was Sean's third birthday. I really wanted to give him his first baseball glove. It's like, it's cool that I found this, but it's clear I made a huge mistake because I'll never get to see my son again. I'm going to die here. Um, Which, actually, hold up. Hold up. Because now I think I am right. You say that she finds the body. How? He falls into lava and dies. No, well, that's a dream. Yeah, I don't think that what? literally happened. No, Here's that's how like, I know he- he, he saw his brother die. Well, I mean, dream about his brother dying. We don't have to accept that as fact. I think it's extra weird, though, considering this character, I don't think, believes in the center of the earth. Like when the, when the movie starts, it's like, like we got to go get him in the center of the earth. He's just like, we have to find him. Like they're not going on a journey to the center of the earth, right. I don't think. They're going to find this little machine. Um, yeah, they wind up in the center of the earth. Yeah. But well, Mando, I, I the thing is. They knew that they weren't going to get to the center of the earth for, I counted, 45 minutes into the movie. Yeah. So they're like, we got to give them a little taste right at the start or everyone's going to mm. be like, this isn't a center of the earth movie at all. That's fair. I yeah. See. The, I see. I will say, because uh, I checked, the scene where they find the pile of rocks ends, like it, it begins with Brendan Fraser finding two rocks and finishing the pile. So that's why I was like, oh, yeah. he made this pile. Right. But like. It oh. wasn't just like all of a pile except two <laughs> rocks, I assume. I think he. It's like Brendan Fraser <laughs> found a cairn with, uh, and was like, I gotta make this my own and put two yeah. more rocks on top to be like, now I made this. Mm, it's missing something. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Although, I do, I think there's maybe a cut of this movie where he builds the entire thing and they were just like, we don't need to show this. This movie's already way too long. Yeah, well, for what's, a movie. what's DJ gonna think happened? Yeah, she found they the camera with two rocks on it. They, mm. If I was in the test screening, I would have been like, guys, <laughs> you got to flesh out this scene. It is yeah. not clear what's happening here. At a I voiceover this- where Brendan Fraser goes, <laughs> I just got done finishing this care yeah. for my brother whose dead body we found. <laughs> mm-hmm. And just to be clear, he was not under any rocks when I found it, right? No. <laughs> yes, uh, he was <laughs> Also, to be to be doubly clear, he did not die from falling into lava. He died no. from exposure or whatever. Yeah. I guess he that died. weird dream I had was just a weird dream and not what literally happened to my brother. Mm-hmm. Like, even if you thought the center of the earth was real, you wouldn't think there's dinosaurs there. You'd just be like, <laughs> they no, put that, that in the book because people is, love dinosaurs. It's but, in the Journey to the Center of the Earth book. So if he's having a dream of like, my brother ended up in his favorite book in real life, then mm, yeah. you would have that in there as part of your weird dream. I guess that's fair. But anyway, uh, so once they're done building right. this giant, and it's not a big, for people, it's like maybe like, you know, the size of like big, you know, like a beach ball. Like it's not that, it, it, it'd it be funny if it was like a mausoleum, but it's it's not that big. Although Brendan right. Fraser is very cool and tough, so he could do it if he had but to. He is very cool and tough. Um, but so now we have the problem where we have to leave the center of the earth. And <laughs> the I, the way he explains it is they're, they're surrounded by lava, but they're in an air pocket. And if like after a while, it's just going to overheat them like they're in an oven and they'll just die because um, it'll get way too hot in there. It's probably how the dad died. Um, just made a question how anything does, is alive down here doesn't but. make any sense yeah <laughs> it's such a weird little thing unless this is the only time that's ever happened well then it wouldn't have gotten the dad yeah so Actually, all of it would be going gone. back to that the dad died 10 years ago what remains did she find a little skeleton probably yeah, yeah. yeah. with a little hat on or something he had skeleton like hat this was his on, favorite yeah. hat 
Yeah, that's what we do. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, remember, she had found the water bottle that said Max. So right, like, right. Yeah. They did make sure. She had clear, reason huh? to believe that any pile this, of bones she found would have been him. Well, this is the Max pile. Uh, that pile might be a different pile. This is the Max pile. Uh, so, so they have to formulate a plan to get out. And their plan is to make a boat, because that's what's in the book. Isn't Sean so smart? Um, so they make a boat, but like the sail is, is it like has a center mast? It's kind of like this like parasail that is used to pull them because like the good air is way up top because thermo, whatever. Um, so they're, they're sailing. I'm going to kind of not like rush through, but kind of like it's not a lot of plot heavy stuff here. It's just we're kind of like on the journey. So like they fight off some piranhas. Mm. Isn't that crazy? Um, the, the 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 big thing is that the the uh the sail like gets loose and Sean has to hold it. And at some point, it pulls Sean away. So now the party has separated, and it's like Sean's <sighs> on his own. Yeah, it's like um, this needed to be longer. Thank you, movie. Right, I know. <laughs> I, I mean, listen, it is it. a tight ninety. It is it a tight, tight 90, ninety. But it, yeah, it's just there's a little bit weird pacing. Um, it's I, paced I, poorly. Yeah, I think that's yeah. right. I, I should. I should have like that thing I always say whenever this comes up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I should mention this because they kind they kind of tell the movie telegraphs is going to happen because at what uh, before they set off on their boat journey, uh, Brendan Fraser goes to the hutch. Hey, this is your dad's compass. Your mom gave it to your dad, so you would never get lost. Um, use this, <laughs> and yeah. the poles are switched where we are, and we have to go north. So that means we have to go. He's like south, and it's like yeah, good job. You know, this will probably come in handy later um so and the answer is kind of not really i mean yeah. i guess it helps him direct himself but it's it's not important in the movie way where you're like yeah oh, there's gonna be a dramatic yeah. moment yeah yeah because so the the hutch by himself stuff is like he wakes up he's kind of wandering around uh he has a little bird friend a glowy bird who helps him who i think is supposed to be the dad like i think that's what that is mm. oh guys come on i don't know maybe i know i I'm, think I'm the not bird is it. the dad the bird is the dad the bird's the dad no uh, please you're speaking metaphorically i don't know maybe there's different rules down here I don't know. Mm. <laughs> DJ, if you had said yes to that question, I would have been like, okay, sure. <laughs> no, I th- I, I'm with DJ. I think the journey to the center of the earth turns you into a bird after a long enough. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it does. <laughs> I think so the bird's right. the dad the birds help guiding him so he has to do like a little like jumpy magnetic stones puzzle um yeah video game puzzle yeah, yeah seriously little, little platformer um uh but but then we get the 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 dinosaur snot the mixture that nando had mentioned um and then he gets chased mm. by a dinosaur but hold up we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that meanwhile brendan fraser like kind of decides I have to go back and get Hutch and uh, Hannah is like, okay, I'm going to go down the river where we're supposed to meet. Cause uh, their plan is to take a geyser all the way up. They're just going to take a geyser and shoot it up to the top. So that's the best way back. And so it's like, I'll meet you where we got to go. Also to their, right? in their defense. So we'll go there. And he's like, okay, but I got to go get Sean. Uh, so, so he goes, I guess he like sees a ruckus and is like, Oh, it must be Sean. So, Sean has cornered himself in this cave where he's being chased by the dino. Uh, I guess all cave walls down here are made like paper mache because like the dino's busting through him. That's fine. Dinos are tough. But Brendan Fraser just takes like a stick and like bashes through the cave wall, which what? is like, it's not, yeah. it's not rock. It's bone. All right. Either way. Like, I mean, it's still crazy, but I'm just yeah, saying. fine. Fine. So dino breaks through fine. Brendan Fraser with stick breaks through it's nuts. Mm. Um, uh, but I, and then they, they to, to, I guess maybe the dream was in reverse because they're running from the dino. They have to kind of like split up and the, the dino is chasing Brendan Fraser and he does like a weird, I guess, cause like the, the, the uh, surface they're on is unstable. So it kind of fall, it, it like cracks. They recognize them. that it's more Muscovite. Muscovite. Yeah. Thank you. And so he does like a little juke and like the Muscovite collapses um, beneath the dino and then the dino dies by falling in the lava. Um, Brendan Fraser also dies, but he gets rescued. Um, <laughs> he dies, mm-hmm. but then he becomes a bird. So it's fine. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> um, 
they meet up with Hannah and they're in like uh, uh she's riding in half of like a hollow like uh, the lower half of a dino skull she's kind of riding that to the river and it's like great so they get to where they're gonna go but all the water's gone and it's like oh no um but uh there was a thing earlier where there was like oh there's magnesium all over the walls and that is flammable by the flares that we had I guess that happened earlier I guess I failed to mention that and Brendan Fraser's like okay the walls are wet so there's water behind there so if I can use the magnesium to blow it up then all the water will rush through and all the steam will come up and he basically does that it's very tense but he does it and then the, it shoots the dino skull up and then they shoot out a volcano and then they fall and it's totally fine they don't die when they you know plummet into the mountainside and slide down it um also they're in italy now um which sure why not same principle because they slide down the mountain of transferring your vertical momentum into horizontal momentum dude they would have so hit the die. side of that mountain no they would have died. died i'm not <laughs> saying they wouldn't have died i'm just saying there is a principle sure sure they would have absolutely died um and uh, hey, everything's better because they're free. But not only that, Josh Hutcherson had smuggled out a bunch of center of earth rock. I don't know what it is. It's not diamonds. It's just like it literally I mean, is diamonds. A word they say out loud. Uh, no, 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 no. It is not diamonds. That is not diamonds. Now, it's if just, you're telling yeah. me this isn't what diamonds look like, correct. <laughs> but yeah. they find a bunch of shiny rocks in a wall and Brendan Fraser goes, oh, diamonds. And Josh Hutcherson is like, like takes some diamonds and is like, I'm going to buy a Maserati with all these diamonds. And then it's the same rocks at the end of the movie. That scene does not happen. That scene does not happen. It happens. No it's the way. Muscovite scene. It's the first Muscovite scene. Oh, okay. I feel like I yeah, where did you think he got the diamonds from? I just thought he just got them. Off screen, maybe. I mean, yeah. you know, maybe a bird gave it to him. Maybe the bird yeah. that was his dad turned into diamonds. It's got its well, we, final form. We do learn that he takes the bird. He kidnaps the bird from the center of the earth. Mm, um, smart. And that bird dies in a few days because Probably. it's completely out of its regular habitat and is unable to survive. Yeah, well, or it thrives so much that it destroys all of the crops in Italy yeah. as an invasive species, and it's just that's well, the next movie. Unless they reproduce asexually, you can't have one bird <laughs> doing becoming an invasive species. Maybe they do. Maybe it makes some eggs that are already about to catch. You know, the glowy maybe it like fertilized already eggs. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe that's what down the... with another bird before it got yeah. up there. But, but Hell yeah, down that's in the. Dino that's bone. the first thing you would do if you turned into a bird. You're like, all right, let's bone down. I want to make like, some I got to figure out how this cloaca works. Yeah, this is going to be fun. So they do that. And then, yeah, so there's lots and lots of birds in the future, probably. I mean, there's not because we've seen a movie that takes place in the future of this universe, but there could be. Um, okay. Well, holy shit, where were we? Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically... Movie. That's the movie. Uh, the lab gets saved because uh, he has all these diamonds now. So he gets a whole building. And Seth Myers is like, what? Correction, those aren't diamonds. Or diamonds aren't worth so much money that the amount you have could do what you want to do with it. That's probably yeah. closer. Because so, they don't have like that many diamonds, right? I'm mean, surprised have a how much bag a bag of them. diamonds can be worth. Especially individual large diamonds. Like, if it was a bag of small diamonds, that's about it. But, like, a big old diamond is very valuable. I know, but he's going to build a whole building on a university yeah. campus? I think okay. he could do it. I All mean, right. it's... You know how like, cheaply you can buy a university? Remember yeah. that guy who body slammed yeah. that reporter who has a whole building <laughs> named after him Gre at our college? Greg Gianforte. It only cost him His 10 family mil. is what the building is named after, not him. It could be anybody. Right, right. Mm, yeah. Gianforte's running around. Because of all around. the notable things his family have done. Yeah. Or any Gianforte. You any know. Gianforte, yeah. The, uh, but yeah, I feel like the diamonds, I don't know, like, what's like the Hope Diamond worth? It's pretty, pretty expensive, right? It's like... I don't know if that's like what th these are, but like it's pretty, it's, it's thick, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the Hope Diamond isn't humongous, but it's like a very fancy diamond. This the Hope Diamond went for somewhere between two and three hundred million. So assuming they got at least one of those in that little bag, they're gonna be a okay. The di the Hope Diamond is worth three hundred fifty million dollars. Yeah. Okay. Fair. All right. Pretty point, cool. Point taken. Uh. Anyway. That's the movie. Wow. Incredible. Well, what's the what's the little stinger at the end that you teased? 
What the, not the Stinger, but like the, oh the, the right. And Brendan Fraser's like, "Hey, we'll have to do this again sometime." And then he hands Hutch uh, a, 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 an Atlantis book. Whoa! Like, oh, next time we're gonna go to Atlantis. Maybe we will. Maybe we meet, won't. We'll see. Meet Aquaman. Yeah, that's where his mom got through to, from Atlantis. So they're just going to go back to the center of the Earth and then go up a different tube like uh, Aquaman does, and then they'll be there. They have to beat that big Kraken that's Julie Andrews. <laughs> I forgot about that. The Kratheran. But they have the dad who's a bird who can commune, probably. Mm, there we go. But yeah, that's the summary. I, it's a great summary because it leaves out all the stuff that's not that important. Uh, and it'll be fun when we say it. And it's on the wheel. Speaking of wheel, are you guys excited for the wheel? You Couldn't know be it, too. More excited. All right. Well, I'm going to spin the wheel because there's wheels in this movie. Maybe. I don't know. The car that he comes in has a wheel. Uh, spin the wheel. Tick, 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 tick. And it lands on uh, one of Diggins's. Diggins, which, uh, which, which one is this? Can you read this one to us? Uh, mine here is Yo Yo Prodigy. This kid mm. is unreasonably good at yo yo for someone who's never even heard of it until this moment. Yeah, especially considering this movie takes place in 2005. Yo yos were fucking everywhere in the in the 2000s. Right. There's no way this guy didn't have a Duncan yo yo commercial between <laughs> you know Rugrats's and stuff like for for us. Did you guys I ever try to yo yo? Oh yeah, I might have one in this room. Like I like I yo-yoing. probably don't, but I'm a pretty good yo yoer. I have never gotten a yo-yo to work in my entire life. Really? I can't do it. What about the ones with the brain? The ones that cheat for you? You got to get you one Uh, of those. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yo-yos are pretty fun. What's even like the idea? I, I, I can't even figure out how it works. I don't know how to describe it. It's just something you do. And next time, next time I see you. I will have a yo-yo and I will show you. We'll talk we'll talk through it. I'll see if you can do it. I think you can. I think it's just like you just have to tr- to do it and then you'll you'll know. But it's like riding a bicycle. You get a two-wheeler. Now there also are like the butterfly yo-yos are the ones that like kind of flare out. Those are easier to use. So that's so, not what he has, but if you start with that, you can maybe have a better He's got like an old start. school yo-yo. Yeah. So, so as you're saying, like, when you do the yo-yo, it's like you put it down and it just, like, plops. It's just like... Yep. Every single fascinating. time. Interesting. Did you did you grow up seeing a bazillion commercials for yo-yos? Oh, 100%. Okay. So were you, were you upset that you couldn't get it to work? I mean, uh, upset is maybe a little strong. Annoyed, perhaps. <laughs> did you ever try, like, you, didn't... you know, like, what's up, Nando? I was to say you didn't take this like super personally and just start doing yo-yo like buying yo-yos and then destroying them because they didn't work. Yeah, I became a I became an anti-yo-yo Batman villain. Yeah, yeah. he would like yeah. interrupt me while I was in the middle of a Toys R Us just torching all the yo-yos. Yeah, you joke, but, like, but I'm pretty sure there was a DC character that was yo-yo <laughs> themed. I'm, look, I'm looking at sure it now. Was. Yeah, in and Flashpoint like, Paradox, one of the one of the Jokerish villains is the. Uh, is yo yo to the yo yo? <laughs> you could have had like all the all the moves would be like walking the dog, cat's cradle, like that would have been yep. all, like your villain moves. Shoot the right, moon. But this speaking of which, this kid first time he's ever touched a yo yo, and apparently never even like heard of it, is doing walk the dog, is doing around the world, yep. he's doing all of it. Yeah, I he mean, doesn't he even is know too that good these at tricks it. Exist. And he's just like independently created them. Yeah, no, it's super weird. And especially an old yo-yo like this, it feels like, although this yo-yo is like, looks like it's like a prehistoric yo-yo, even though this character has been gone for 10 years. These yo-yos existed in the 90s and they were plastic and had like the word yo-mega on them like this one should. This isn't Jules Verne's yo-yo, I don't think. I mean, I suppose we're to assume that this was his yo-yo from when he was a kid. Hmm. I guess that's fair. Yeah, Do you remember oh, what I... Brendan Fraser says about the yo-yo? No. <sighs> yes, it was used for hunting back in the day, right? Well, he does say that. But another thing he says is that this was your dad's PSP. No, yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, yeah. I like that the PSP was in this. That's how you know it's good, like Madam Webb. 
There's a PSP. That's right. New York's crazy these days. New York's crazy. <laughs> That's a whole days. new level. A whole of crazy. new level of crazy. Dinosaurs. Big old piranhas. Nine eleven. Nine eleven. Yeah. <laughs> Giuliani. It says never get crazier than this. They said foolishly. Oh man, I'm fascinated by this yo-yo thing. What about hula hoops? Can you hula hoop, Dickens? I can hula hoop. What about a um, uh, oh, what were those called? The skipping thing. You know what I'm talking about? It's called I the skipping. About yeah, I could do that. Yeah, you do that. Okay, TJ, can you, can you hula hoop? Uh, well, pop I, it's just like Simon says. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I that that was mostly a joke. Uh. Okay. So I. I. You know. You feel like this would be a yes or no answer, but I haven't hula hooped in in a minute. I assume I can, right? Like I probably could hula hoop, right? Well, Irrational could you when you were a child. No. Yeah. I'm just talking about what I could do when I was a kid. <laughs> Wait a me- second. Hold on. You couldn't when you were a child, but you think you can now. Yeah. <laughs> you think you figured it out? In the I've gotten years? better, yeah. I, was I don't know about this. <laughs> All right, so we're going to teach Diggins how to yo-yo me how to hula hoop. Yeah. We teach each yeah, other because is... we know the, the right. other skill, right? So we'll have have I don't know that knowledge. I know how to do it anymore. No. I was Wait, doing the opposite now, of you, DJ. I could do it as a kid. How would you lose that skill? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I think you could still get uh, hula hoop. I think hula hooping as a skill is way more like sense of memory than yo-yoing. I think yo-yoing is something you could kind of maybe forget if you hadn't done it in a while. Uh, but hula hooping is like, I'm I'm sh- not sure, but I would pretty much get, like I'd, I'd put money down that Diggins as a yo-yo or as a hula hooper from the past can hula hoop now. I agree. I but, wholeheartedly agree. You should never yeah. bet on me being able to do something. It's, a, it's not a sound investment. I mean, you know, it's all in the hips, man. You got to... It's just, I, 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 yeah, I think, but I'm, I'm very curious about DJ. If you could hula hoop from, from j- like zero, I don't know. I really think if, I could. If, you, if with the wisdom of an adult, you can figure it out. Yeah. I might have to bring one to your place next time I show up. All right. Like, and like bringing a, a yo-yo wasn't going to be a big deal. Bringing a hula hoop's going to be way more of an ask. I don't know where I'm going <laughs> to find one, but I'm going to find one. <laughs> I bet they got him at Target. <laughs> uh, all right. The in the the yo-yo is a very yeah. It is the cliche of the of the three D movie. Um, I really thought the yo-yo was going to come back. Me too. Especially, Especially when he like, said like they used it for hunting. I was like, he's going to knock out a dinosaur with a yo-yo or something. It would have been maybe sick. that. Oh my gosh. Maybe that was the troglobite scene or whatever that like kind of happened off screen where they're just eating one and you're like, where'd they get this? Maybe yo-yo they had that. The, they hunted a troglobite. That's right. Yeah. Let's look up deleted scenes. See if there's a, if there's that. Tickets, um, no one knows how to actually pronounce pronounce any of these things. Let's mm-hmm. be very clear. We're all troglobite guessing, is right? a very famous extinct animal. That's all I'm saying. Right. And I'm saying we got to pronounce it like it would pronounce its name, but it's a dead guy. So we don't know, you know, like Pikachu. It's like, how do we know how to pronounce Pikachu? Pikachu tells us. That's that's how you know. You said to see how Troglobite would say its own name and then we'll know how to pronounce it. Right, I'm looking up deleted scenes for Journey to the Center of the Earth, seeing if I can find one. I can't. They don't exist. Well, I In mean, the meantime. Yeah. Unless one of you has more to say about yo-yos, maybe you should spin that wheel again. All right, yeah, I'll spin that wheel. Tick, 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 lands on one of DJs. DJ, what do you got? All right, well, um, obviously, it landed on my wheel slice. Hold on, let me put my glasses on. Um, getting your glow up mid-adventure. Mm. So, I think this is very interesting how the movie posits, like, our our hero for how he's going to do uh, big, awesome action scenes. Brennan Fraser is just, like, a nerd. Like, like he's a scientist. He's, you know, he, he, he does rocks, right? Yeah. Um, and he's a, and he's a professor that none of the girls are writing little letters on their, on their, you know, eyelids to. Like, right, it's right, not, not like the other not people in the to universe. Him to commit uh, statutory rape at all. Yeah. Or if, and he's also like, he's a big mess. I would say that it's his defining trait. Uh, so yeah, this guy's probably got some trouble with the ladies. Um, yeah, it's, it's pr- probably not going great. All that being said, he like 
as the course of their journey through the center of the earth, he he becomes less of a big nerd and because becomes like more of a cool guy. He's like more of that, like, you know, confident. I'm like beating up plants. It's like I'm I'm hitting on the the um guy that's like, you know, I'm I'm ripping off my sleeves and I'm showing my the gun show. Mm. By the way. Why, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm just saying this as an observation. It is wild what what uh, counts for the gun show in 2008, what, which counts yeah. for the gun show in even 2018, right? You oh, know, yeah. I mean, uh, The Rock would do this very movie in 2012 and look like The Rock, like a humongous right, man exactly. with giant exactly. muscles. And, yeah. yeah. So so uh, Brendan Fraser was... Yeah. It, it, we it, need it, to it, go back. <laughs> you know... He was established. Robert Pattinson is trying to take us back. <laughs> yeah, he really it's is. It's all on his shoulders. <laughs> um, this is a new kind of Batman. But, you know, yeah. he, he was established from the mummy. So I guess he got like grandfathered into not having to be a big old muscle man. Um, but I, well, that was just what it was like back then. You didn't have to be a big muscle yeah. man. Um, well, but, but then you had guys like Hugh Jackman who like started as not a big muscle man. And then as their career progressed through time, they had to work out to a level of like insanity. So. Yeah, Brendan Fraser, I think just he's he gets by on charisma. I think that's always kind of been his deal. Yeah. Um, but it's just interesting that in this movie it's, it's also it's, just it, not an action star anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh but it's not only the level of what he starts out as in terms of being like he starts out as the at you know, a a a muscle man of that time. He starts out as a big old nerd and like becomes the muscle man. And like that's a very interesting transformation through the course of this movie. Like he's able to do the action stuff, and there's no reason we think that this character, given everything we've seen, should be able to do the action stuff. It's 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 quite something, I think. Uh, DJ, interestingly, I also had this note, although I came at it from a different direction. Sure. Uh, for got? me, tick, 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 this wheel slice is named uh, the trying not to be sexist and failing tango. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because it does a thing, a lot of movies, I mean, movies still do this, but I feel like in this time, it was an extremely common thing, like nearly every movie like this would have it, where it's <laughs> like, you don't want the woman character to be useless because that's not cool anymore. Right, now feminism right, right. Is, exists. Right. So mm. we've got to have her be cool. So at the start of the movie, she's the mountain guide. He, Brendan Fraser is, is bumbling and making mistakes and she's yeah. saving him and like fixing it and everything. And you're like, oh man, she's the cool, competent one. But then as it goes on, he magically becomes better at stuff than her. Right. And he ends up being the cool guy who's always saving her, and she's basically useless. Right, right, right. Because you still want, because obviously the main, the male character is still the main character who all the boys are going to identify with. So he has to be cool by the end. So like, we'll just start with her not being a damsel who doesn't do anything, but then she becomes that. And then it's not sexist, guys, because she did something at some point. Well, and I, this movie kind of forgets to not also give them both the same skill set. Like, Brendan Fraser yeah. is a nerd of rocks and stuff and geology. Like, if you made him a scientist who just knew computers and she's the person who knows rocks and he gets in there and is like, well, I don't know how to program this. And she's like, you silly guy, this is magnesium. But they both know that. And they both know most of the stuff about making a boat and shit. So it's like, really, they're they're so pointless. Uh, or because the movie was forgot. that he knew the book really well, so she right. like, this is the science, and he'd be like, ah, but in the book it happens like this, and then that works, and she's like, what? And he's like, I guess being a big nerd is helpful after all. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Mm -hmm. eat your heart out. Yeah. But yeah, no, it is it is weird that they chose to do it do it this way. I think it's just like they wanted these characters to bond, so they had to have all the same interests, and yeah, that was they thought that worked, but it doesn't. It doesn't work. But yeah. I also am like they have sex, sure. Like I don't see why not. <laughs> I think from minute one they would just go, "You're hot, I'm hot. You live in the middle of nowhere." Like, you don't seem like a person who sees people more than once a week. And I'm Brendan Fraser. And you live in Iceland to begin with, a country where you need an app to make sure anyone you might date isn't your cousin. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Is that, um, is, 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 is that true? 
it's true that there's an app in Iceland to make sure that somebody isn't your cousin before you date them. That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, it's an it's an isolated country with not a very large population. It's a real problem. Yeah. Man. Have you not seen? Well, I guess this is in Iceland. It's Ireland in the sketch. But one of, there was a great SNL sketch where it's a dating game, but two of the characters are his cousin, uh, and one of them isn't. And uh, they, they that's funny. So yeah, this fantastic. Is, this, the people love it. And I, Iceland has even fewer people than Ireland, I would assume. So, it's even worse. Um, I'm gonna put in that chat. Uh, I'm gonna spin the wheel, and uh, I think that it's two wheels or something. I think we maybe. skipped him. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, oh, well, just, no, we. I was just going yeah. on top of yours. No, like, no, no. It's the same I, point. I, no, it's it's a. Uh, we'll see. But first, I'm gonna spin it for we'll me. We'll see. Tick, 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 and lands on one of mine. Anatomically correct Venus flytraps. So the Venus flytrap monster things, uh, I've seen Venus flytraps before, but not like uh-huh. like all open up and stuff. But like, I don't know what they look like, but like they got an interesting look to them in this, the inside specifically. Uh, and I didn't love it. It was kind of upsetting. <laughs> yeah. Um, could you could you go into more detail? Can you expand about that, please? Yeah, I, I, I can't. Uh I want I do want to look up the real quick. I want to look up a Venus flytrap, see what it does look like. They're they're such yeah, they don't look like this at all. Uh, so, and this isn't like not. It's it's different than a Venus flytrap because it's like poison ivy. It has the power to like make little fucking tentacles and shit out of grass. So it's like a special one, but still, like it's not based off the real ones. The real ones are just kind of two red insides, but there's nothing in the middle. This one goes to great lengths to give this thing a middle section of the like what it was. What would be the mouth of this? But it has way too much detail, considering none of the rest of the shit in this movie does. The the T-Rex has like eight polygons on it. But for some reason, there was somebody that really wanted to model the Venus flytrap. And uh, we should <laughs> find that guy and put him in jail because he's probably <laughs> not Georgia a good guy on this one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so weird. Um, I just I that, that stood out to me as really strange when I was watching this. And yeah, there's a scene where like Venus flytraps try to eat the main characters. It's stupid. Uh, that's the one where he Batman backhands one of them. That's kind of funny. I love that um, and it's so like much. So obvious it doesn't connect. Yeah, yeah, it's a really oh, bad he's, version. Oh, he's of that. five feet away easily. Mm. <laughs> and I will say, because we're talking about Brendan Fraser, the action star, I do think this movie uh, makes one weird choice about Brendan Fraser that I didn't understand at all. Because what they say in the beginning of the being in the center of the earth and like we had to get out because the center of the earth is going to get hot. And it's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter and we're going to burn to death or whatever. But um, when they're explaining this, they're all dressed like they're dressed when they go on their little journey. As the movie progresses, the guide I, like takes like loses a layer or two. Brendan Fraser, when he is constructing the boat, has on like a, an A shirt or whatever you call it, tank top, I guess, that was underneath his thermal like sleeve shirt. But then... From every scene post that, he puts the shirt back on. Like, <laughs> why is he not yeah. wearing the the A shirt the whole time? I don't. It was weird because I thought That's that would be point. how he would become hunky. He loses the sleeves on the thermal later, but it doesn't happen the way you would expect. Um, well, because Nando Ben and Frazier is just so hot that even a yeah. hundred degrees is cool to him. Oh, Good baby. for him, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, real quick question. Where do you guys think Venus flytraps are from? Uh, Mars? I'm going to say Bolivia, since we talked about it earlier. Um, Besides the center of the earth. real guess on there? Um, uh, Australia. That's a good one. North and South Carolina. Get out, really? Yeah. Wow. Something about the soil there or something? Yeah, it must be. I don't know. It's just where they're from. <laughs> wow. All right. It's cool. funny because every time you see one of these things in a movie or a kid's show or whatever, they're in a jungle or something. Yeah. They're just hanging out in the Carolinas. It should wow. be like surrounded by like, you know, corn and tomatoes and crops or so, or something, you know, <laughs> like whatever. Tobacco whatever mainly. They, yeah. Yeah. Tobacco and sugar and stuff. Um, that should be in more movies, though. Every movie set in South and North Carolina should be forced to have at least one Venus flytrap somewhere in one shot just <laughs> to get the point across to our youth. Just let um, them know what the deal is. Yeah. 
Uh, I spun the wheel again. Tick, tick, tick. Landed on one of Diggins's. Diggins, what, what did it land on for you? Uh, the thing that DJ didn't remember, incredibly, that we alluded to mm-hmm. earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a thing I like to call Hutchie Kong Country. Yeah. Why don't I remember this? So, in between them getting stuck in the cave and then falling down the Muscovite floor to the center of the earth, they find something else that yeah. gives them hope that they can find a way out. An old mining operation that collapsed and killed a bunch of people, according to Hannah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're like, mm, but mine carts have to get out. Like they had to haul it up. So they, the, maybe if we follow the mine cart track, we'll get out. Oh, right. Yeah. How did I forget this? So it doesn't matter. Playing. It completely doesn't matter. Yeah, it was it all the advertising for this movie back when it was when it was coming out. I remember yeah, seeing that, this that pretty vividly. Sense. So first of all, the way they they decide to start searching is uh, Brendan uh, Fraser and Josh Hutcherson sit in mine carts while yeah. <laughs> the while Hannah gets in a hand cart, the thing you like mm-hmm. yep, push up yep. and down to make a move, and does it by herself. Yeah. And it, it's the classic design where there's room and like handles for two people. I mean, but Brendan Fraser is like, I'm just going to sit this one out. Yeah. She's getting paid for this. 650 an hour, you work for it, you know? You do the mind 65 part. 65 an hour. 650 though. No, I think it's 650 is what she's getting paid. It would be 65 no. rolls of quarters. No, 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 it's 65 dollars and it was Whatever you like, no seven and a half rolls of quarters is what you said. Or yeah, whatever. it's sixty five dollars an hour. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's you. That's that. that's why I, I mean, said that's... it's actually a very reasonable rate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know so why I thought a, it was the other you know, one. Eight hour day. Yeah, you know, like you know, almost like five hundred dollars a day. It's pretty good. And she should be and billing also, them for sleeping and stuff, like time that it's like. Honestly, you it know. should be a 24 so Yeah, it really should. Yeah. Be. And also the part where she's like 5,000 kroner and he's like, a day? Sounds great. It's like, you want to pay her $65 a day, a day. Mm-hmm. to do this? Or <laughs> That is crazy. That or is he nuts. wanted to pay her $5,000 a day. He thought that was what it was, which I, I guess is kind of more reasonable. But like, yeah, this character is just pretty stupid. Also, I guess, I don't know if we... Yeah, it's sixty five dollars. You're right. I don't know why I thought it was six fifty. I guess I just thought it was a much lower rate than you would expect. But uh, but yeah. Um. Anyway, so she's pushing, and then, but then, uh oh, they went the wrong way. They start going down, further down. Oh no! And mm-hmm. um, I mean, whoever designed this mind should have been the world's most famous architect or something, <laughs> because somehow. Yeah. In the middle of an infinite abyss, they managed to build a rickety, like, single-layer minecart track that mm-hmm. twists and turns like a Donkey Kong level. Yeah. <laughs> um, going all across this huge chasm all mm-hmm. the way to the other side, but only after ending in three split ways that two of them are dead ends and one just comes to a nice slow stop. And also, there's a little bump in the road at one point where yeah. it's broken. Yeah. But fortunately, the thing, the the tracks like go up, and your three, I must emphasize, unconnected mm-hmm. uh, mine carts can fly through the air and then land one after the other perfectly. They didn't deviate at all. <laughs> No, but they did have the extra thrust to go because Hannah did extra pushing on the thing. They're like, come on, get us over this. And she's like, all right, I'll do it. And then she makes it and she's like, woo, thank you. And then she's like, great. (laughs) Which at this point, they're they're going like roller coaster speeds. They're zooming. Mm -hmm. I'm sure whoever made this movie was like, we're going to put this in our theme park one day. When this it is looked, a huge that's hit. what it looks like. It, well, yeah. who, was it Universal? Like, who is it that uh, made this? I think so. Right? Like, it's one of them. It's not Disney, I don't think. It was no, New no, Line no. Cinemas. I don't oh, know so. who owns them. Well, whoever that bought them. But it, it, so I think it would have been at a Six Flags. Six Flags. Yeah. yeah. So that tracks. Let's put this in mm-hmm. fucking Six Flags. Oh, Hell man. yeah. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah, that part was weird. And especially because, like, you could use the Donkey Kong Country, which is correct, but also I like Hutchie Kong Country, or excuse me, Hutchie Kong Country. But like, you know, 
Indiana Jones is that, right? Like the the Indiana yeah. Jones does the minecart thing, but it doesn't look like stupid, you know, Indi- <laughs> like the, Donkey Kong. So it's not it the minecart cool. section from Resident Evil Four. Yeah, <laughs> it's just so rough. Um, but yeah, and it, apparently it's so forgettable. DJ didn't even remember that it was real. Mm-hmm. I know. I it totally totally spaced it. Unfortunately. Uh. <laughs> You gotta pay more attention next time, I guess. I don't know. DJ, by the way, I spun the wheel. Tick, 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 tick. Landed on one of yours. It sure did. Um, it landed on... I just want to talk about this one. It's so weird. Um, biting that booty. So. Oh, sh- I had this too, but I said oh, fish yeah. hungry for dead ass. I, this was so weird. Um, so... Sorry, this is, I'm just rewatching this because it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, it really um, is. As an actress, are you like standing in front of a green screen on like a fake raft, and the director is like, "No, wiggle your butt more. We've mm-hmm. got to believe a fish is about to chomp down on it." Are <laughs> so, you yes. like, "I've made a terrible mistake." <laughs> There's a scene. Oh God! There's a scene where they're they're on the boat. They're being attacked by the piranhas, and there's like a piranha. I think it's like sitting on the boat, or maybe it's like in the water, like near the boat. And Hannah is like bending over in this way. It's like so weird, which is where it's like ass out, and it looks. Like yeah, as all women bend over. That's how, mm-hmm. yeah. The the women who listen to this podcast, which I can't imagine there are any, but apparently there are. I mean, there's um, there's if there's men that listen to this podcast, I'm equally confused. Why does anybody listen to this podcast? Yeah. You know, <laughs> fair point. Fair point. Um, whenever you, whenever you like lean forward or something, you just like go ass out, right? Just like wiggle it around a little bit, right? That's how women act. Well, this is where you learn you shouldn't do that because look at the consequences or what they could have been at least. Right. So it, it, it looks like her ass is about to get chomped on. And to be clear, if this happens, she's dead because these piranha are huge. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's taking out her leg. It's like, this is about to murder her, but like, she's unaware. At the very she's... least she'll have chronic flat ass from this point <laughs> forward. And that might as well be a death sentence for a woman. Mm, especially in the two thousands when our Cisco's and our, you know, Jennifer Lopez and stuff, we were just mm, figuring yeah. that out as a society. And, and yeah, that it, it was very important. So she's fighting off the prawns and Brendan Fraser lets out his classic no! and he like yeah. pushes the piranha to the side and he's like I have you my sweet lady um, this no. is a weird oh no no scene. DJ you wish it was that simple he picks the fish up by the tail oh, and yeah. then throws like a stick to Josh Hutcherson he's like do you sw- know how to switch hit, <laughs> switch hit. and yeah. has Josh Hutcherson like bash it like a pinata and send it flying <laughs> you got team rocketed out of there <laughs> yeah although um, I didn't hate this. I like the idea, and this is the only time the movie does this, that we're doing the activities that Brenda Fraser suggested we do that are like father and son activities in the movie, but in Journey to the Center of the Earth Village. Like I said, it doesn't happen again, so who gives a shit? But like at that moment, I was like, oh, that's cute. Like your favorite movie, Onward. Exactly. I think I saw that probably. It had Chris Pratt from that movie, What If Mr. Peanut and His Friends Saved the World to Robots. So I believe we did good. a podcast on Onward. No, we definitely did. I just, I couldn't, I can remember so little from that movie besides they invent magic or something. It's hard. That movie They're was like. reinventing magic because magic yeah. existed, but has, right. most people have forgotten it because technology. Mm-hmm. That movie was truly the beginning of COVID. So that was like real tough. Yeah, literally. Yeah. It was the last movie I saw in a theater until after. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, same. you know, COVID's still happening, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah especially no, early. It's, against, it's over. Stop That's it. That's true, yeah. Obviously. It's over. I, I, if it was still happening, one of our major political parties would have mentioned it by now. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. It would have been in an election <laughs> issue. So they, they're, they'd probably be mailing know. us tests so we could, you know, just have them just in case. They right? did that. They're doing They actually again. did again. <laughs> yeah. So are they actually? Oh, man. I got to pay attention. And it's more. two, which is usually what lasts me for a year. So, you know, <laughs> or two, I guess. I think it's four. So it's two per house, you know, two per person if you live in a two person household. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I know that now. I'm going to go. Was it USPS? I'm going to do this right now. I think so. Yeah. Get your tests, folks. Speaking of the butt scene with the piranhas, do you remember what Josh Hutcherson is doing in this scene? Which I think is equally stupid. Especially considering what happens in this movie and stuff and like what what he's doing while the butt thing is happening. 
Isn't he just like watching and being like, no. No, he misses most of this because he is on the phone with his mom. That's so right. He finally got reception which, and he's pretending they're not in the center of the earth, which is weird uh, because you assume if they survive, they're going to have to tell her. But also he's not like, I love you, mom. By the way, I, I think yeah. I'm going to die in piranhas now. He's just like, yeah, trying to cover this up. It's so strange. Listen, you know, at a certain age, you just don't want to tell your mom anything, you know? Yeah. You yeah, see what's going on in your life, and you're just like, mm, nothing, mm, whatever. Yeah. Also, I lied. He does see the butt. He 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 sees it and does nothing, you know? So it's, it's, bare, it's almost his fault. He's but a young man. He doesn't fully realize the value of an ass. <laughs> Apparently Like Brendan not, Fraser, yeah. a man of the world, uh, a man <laughs> with experience who knows what it would cost her to lose such a thing. We can't lose yeah. this ass. This does feel like a scene written for J-Lo or something, like a person famous for their butt, and then it would be like, that would be the fun of it. But J-Lo was probably busy or something. Yeah, I, I want to know how that was pitched in the writer's room. So it's like, all right, so we'll see what happens. We're going to be attacked by piranhas, and then we're going to have her bend over, but like not like at the waist. It's going to be like, you know, 45-degree angle, you know, just like, you know, just kind of like you're, 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 you're doing the YMCA, and uh, we're, mm. we're, we're, we're going to just like have they're a, not going to a... invent twerking for another like 12 years yeah, or something, right? but yeah. it's basically a twerk. Yeah. If she could so, twerk, uh, that maybe would have defended her. She could have used the twerking yeah, to used physically the, the push the thing away. Get, and, uh, mm. Yeah, to, to defend the piranha. It's, we're going to have the piranha look like it's going to bite her butt, but Brendan Fraser's mm-hmm. going to save her. It's, I also, I mean, maybe to your earlier point, Diggins, I, I was going to say, there's just so, there's so much CGI on the screen. It's not like they're on like a little studio back lot, like little you know, two foot lake. It's the water right. is CGI. The the everything around them is CGI. I, I could not imagine what this looked like to film. I mean, maybe they because... had no idea. Maybe they were just like, <laughs> wiggle your butt around. I think we can figure something out for this, but we don't know what yet. And then that's what they did. I was going to say, you can tell because you can, in any scene where we're like actually focusing on them and it's not a wide shot, you can tell the raft is not moving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is before they would build a big pneumatic like machine that would make it actually kind of jerk around, um, which is what is cool in movies now. Uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna spin the wheel. I got one more thing on the wheel. Uh, tick 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 tick. I don't even really need to spin it, but I do have one more thing. It landed on one of mine. This is my favorite thing, uh, and something that I keep bringing up, even though it's not that important, is Brendan Fraser's psychotic apartment. I just want to talk about <laughs> how filthy this apartment is. This man, this is the apartment you would give a character who has been like, like depressed for years or something, has never left the apartment. And this is the first time he's seeing a person again, as opposed to a guy who like goes to job and stuff. Because for people that don't know, and and I do think it's like five minutes into the movie. So if you're not going to watch the whole thing, this is before any of the weird CGI starts really taking over. Although there is a little bit. It is Um, after the tape measure. Yeah, it's after the tape measure. It's after the tape measure. <laughs> but Brendan Fraser has to go through his apartment, which is like some of it's like papers and academic stuff, whatever. But most of it's plates with like half eaten food on it. And he just runs around the apartment bringing plates to different stuff. He puts one in the fireplace and closes the little fireplace curtains. And you can still totally see it's a plate. But um, this man just eats half of a meal and goes i guess we're done with this how is this place not filled with roaches he is disgusting there is like it it really looks like the house of like a hoarder or something like that there's just so many papers everywhere so many books just on every floor and like floor like just stuff is piled on the floor it's it's insane that this character is supposed to be cool and likable Yet they write this in and never mention it. Like they kind of went like, well, he's a bachelor, right? So he has to have like a cool bachelor pad. Just, what's that like? Mostly clothes on the floor and plates and pizza boxes and shit. No, no, that's how the people will know. But it's unbelievable. I, I, I've never seen an apartment this dirty in a movie where the character wasn't also like a conspiracy theorist who, you know, has like crazy boards everywhere. Yeah, he must be severely depressed, right? Like, I mean, I he, he's he's you know Brendan Fraser, so he's the, like his character is pretty cheer, cheery, or like he's got that goofiness to him, but maybe he's hiding something. I don't know. Hard to judge. I do think that Brendan Fraser does have like 
a quality that like the rock doesn't of like goofiness that made him so interesting in the, Mm -hmm. in the two thousands and nineties and Diggins, I, I, you still haven't seen the mummies. So you don't know like the heart of this, but like, yeah, he was, he was great. And was his living space also filthy in the mummy movies? You know, he was in jail. We never saw his living space in Mm, the second mummy movie. We see is a house and he's super loaded because of mummy stuff. So, um, it's a big mansion, I think. Or that might be Jonathan's house. I don't know if he lives there. That's the thing. Even when he has money, he's still like doing mummy stuff. So he's always on the road. Because um, he just loves mummy. Yeah, he loves mummy. He's got to find them all. And uh... Uh, so at the end of this movie, Hannah is in America with them, which raises a lot of questions. But Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Do you think, because they've like kissed and they're like getting together by the end of the movie. Do you think? Because he called dibs. He, because he called it. Well, right? actually, yep. Sean called dibs, but he chival- chivalrously, you know what I'm saying. Oh, uh, yeah. Surrenders his dibs to his uncle. <laughs> yeah. What a um, cool kid. What a great guy, yeah. Do you think that they get to his apartment and or he's like, oh, yeah. right, here we are. And she's like, oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> nah, Absolutely. I'm Outta going here. back to Iceland. <laughs> Especially considering she was living in a little house, you know, she probably is like really tidy and stuff because we see the inside of it for a little bit. And it's just like a nice little house right. where it's he has a big apartment in like, I think, San Diego or something like that. Like it's a, like a a city, but it's like a pretty good sized apartment for a single man. And it's just filled with crap. Like it's such a mess. Um, I just yeah, I think I think she probably would have left him. And that's why he's probably single. He's probably like always going over to the girlfriend's house and she's like, I think he's homeless or something because he never <laughs> oh wants gosh. to go to his place. And but he Some also Some of us fucking... are just very private. Yeah. Does he yeah. buy new bowls instead of cleaning them? Like <laughs> he has so many bowls specifically. And this is all... a sticking point for you, huh? This, this yeah, is... it's it's gross. And like even from the <laughs> In the scene where at the end of the movie that you're talking about, where you see everybody leaving and like, and Hannah's there, although, um, yeah, and then they're bringing the kid back. Um, you can see from the street the inside of his apartment, and you can just see like the entryway, and it's still filthy. It's crazy, <laughs> crazy. Like, even if this, it, I would buy it if this character lived where he worked. Is this was his office too? But he has a job. He has a whole office that no one That's uses true. for anything now. He should start putting his bowls there or something. Because I don't know, man. This guy's this guy's got problems. I mean, nobody's perfect, but who let him get away with this? I think is a question we need to I mean, answer. Yeah, I'm not surprised that he. I mean, doesn't only have himself, it all. You know? Yeah. So it happens. Some like you guys haven't haven't lived alone for a long time. You don't know what it's like out here. You mm. know? Yeah, that's fair. sometimes it's just. It all piles up, and you're just too lazy and depressed. Just like you know? I get that, yeah. yeah. So that's bad movie. Uh, <laughs> do you guys want to get to our classic segment? <laughs> what I a great summary that. of a great all podcast! Right. Yeah, what a what bad movie that was. No, I was okay. I don't know. It was pretty weird. Uh, it was. Here's my one question about the movie. One yeah. question. Yeah. Uh, where do we rank it in the two of these? Which is it? better than the one with the rock is it worse is it that because no. the other one similar. feels so forgettable this question is predicated on me remembering the second <laughs> exactly. one which is a tall order do you think you'll remember this one in like a year though or however long yeah i guess it's been about a year since we did it i already don't remember it I, <laughs> yeah That's i'm gonna go sign. on a limb and say no, this one I, is not better. I do remember bits and pieces of the second one, mainly the like really weird stuff, but I'll say that makes it better than this one. I Yeah, I'm really having trouble remembering anything from the last one besides that Michael Caine hated The Rock. There was something going on there as like a big plot point. but um, And The Rock Thunder Cookies people. And what was Thunder Cookies? Was that like... A dance he did, or was that just what, what was that? Yeah, it was like his pecs popping or something. It was okay, like, I'm gonna give you the thunder cookie. thunder cookie. Wait, so is it something he would use to like attract a woman, or something he would use to beat up a, a villain? 
or something. I think it w- it was an attack. I think he was oh. saying like I'm gonna thunder cookie um. I thought I could have sworn because I think he's done this in another movie. Gone like there's a there's a what do you do when you see a nice you know beautiful woman? He's like you give her the old thunder cookies or something like that. But that's not what it is. But he does some like peck dance thing. I think it's from this movie. Well, that's that's the thing. Like I don't know if that was a thing he did in wrestling, DJ, but I know. Him doing the peck pop was a thing for a little bit. He did do the peck pop, but unless I'm misremembering, I do not believe he called it the thunder cookie in his wrestling mm. career. I oh, don't no, 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 not the okay. thunder cookie part. Just the fact that he would do peck pop. Yes, yes, that is correct. Yeah, okay. So I'm, I found the clip. He does punch a monster or something and says the punch is the thunder cookie or something. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Interesting. Cool, good. This is good. <laughs> Um, so on the basis of the thunder cookie alone, I say the second one is better. Yeah. I do think like, I think this could be more popular or, or like it could have life because of how weird it looks. Um, I could see people going back and like having, having fun watching it because of that. But uh, I mean, it made even more money than this one did. So it uh, must've been better. Oh, excuse me. I mean this one, I mean this one, like, I think this one you could go back to to today and it would be like, oh, my God, what a what a crazy thing. Whereas I think the one with the rock looks fine. It mm-hmm. looks so normal that it's not really memorable. But this one is like 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 how Spy Kids kind of has that weird kind of 2000 CGI sheen where nothing <laughs> looked right. But it was clearly they were like figuring out the kinks of it. What? um. Yeah, I don't know. What else do you guys think? Uh, if they ever made one, Atlantis probably off the table. They were going to go to the moon in the third one. Any other books this guy made? Can they go to Atlantis? They never actually went to Atlantis. Can they do that now? I mean, it's weird because there's other Atlantis movies, right? Like, could they do... But, hmm. I don't know. They could take the Stargate to Atlantis? That was a, that was a show. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 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 Jules Verne books. Let's see. Let me Google real oh, quick. let's go. All right. So we got Around the World in 80 Days. That's a Jules Verne. They made a movie of that. It's like Jackie many, Chan. They made many movies of many Jules Verne books. Yeah. Oh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. That's Jules Verne. Yeah. But yeah. that's that's what basically Journey to the Mysterious Island is. Well, during, yeah. During the Mysterious Island, there's also The Mysterious Island, which is the Jules Verne book. Um, From Earth to the Moon. There's that one. Yeah, I don't know. He's really, really scratching the bottom of the barrel when it comes to Jules Verne books. We could turn into movies. Well, um, and we said the next one of these is Hutch's dad has some shitty kid, I guess. And then are the Rock and Brendan Fraser mean, are they like co granddads? Like, how does that work? You mean Hutch has a shitty kid? Yeah, Hutch has sorry, his kid, and sorry, Hutch right, becomes Hutch, the dad. Right, Hutch. Hutch's dad already has a shitty kid. It's Hutch. Yeah, <laughs> right. But so now, right, Hutch has a shitty kid. So, but now our Rock and Brendan Fraser co-granddads are they like I like like Indiana Jones three kind of deal? I think it to keep with like the the franchise, they would have to also both be gone. There would have to oh. be some new guy who Hollywood is trying to push on us, like. Jason Momoa or something, who's like his secret third uncle or, or something like that. Or he's like, like his brother-in-law now. Yeah. I, right. I love Because this. he was in love with, what's her name, right? Um, Vanessa Hudgens in the last one? Yes. yes. So, oh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, or Zac Efron. Luis Guzman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the he idea else? that Hutch is the connective thread to these movies. But mm-hmm. he just ages and then the surrounds change. So, okay. Next movie... Let's say next two or three movies, Hutch's dad, and then four movies from now, Hutch's granddad, and then Hutch. He's Hutch, the Michael Caine character. Yes, yes. Yeah. Hutch's shitty kid has shitty kid, right? Mm-hmm. Hutch's shitty kid is now also dad, and right. We just keep going, right? The only rule is the other actor has to be bigger than Hutch. Every movie has to introduce <laughs> an actor who like is further up on the poster and you're like, oh, it's this movie now. And then you get there and it's like, but there's is one guy who's from all of them and it's Josh Hutcherson. I love that. So I don't know who's who's huge now right now. Timothy and also, Chalamet every or something. Sing- <laughs> every so single it- movie, Josh Hutcherson's mom shows up for a little bit and it's always a different actress. Yeah, yeah, I like that. 
We'll get Marissa Tomei to be one. We'll get mm-hmm. um, who else? Jenna Ortega. The kids love Jenna Ortega. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, you know, just Does less he have less. Mom? They make less why and not? less sense as the thing goes on. Yeah, they're like <laughs> they're younger than him, and you know, Rosemary Harris. We can get all the all the Spider Man moms. We can just have them. Yeah, and I think it would be fun too because. Um, you know, the kids need to understand the Jules Verne books because they're not as popular as they were when we were kids, I don't think, you know. And they weren't very popular when we were kids, but we had at least League of Extraordinary Gentlemen to sexy them up and stuff. So that would be helpful is, for kids. Is like Captain Nemo in the League of Extraordinary he Gentlemen? Is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. He's like one of their main guys. Have you have we not done Leave Extraordinary Gentlemen on this podcast? Or if you did, so. it was before I was on. Oh, that Leave Extraordinary Gentlemen is so weird. But yeah, Captain Nemo is one of the main guys. Um, and it is suggested that Phineas Fogg or whatever was also part of the league at some point. So it's it's perfect for that kind of thing. Uh, Diggins, you were on the podcast for the Leave Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, right. You guys right. did that while I was on a submarine or whatever. Oh, yeah. No, uh, wait, wait, oh, yep. Yep. That nailed it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Captain Nemo submarine. It's a shame. You still guys want to do it again? Yeah, we probably should. <laughs> Why not? The new Batman 89. Why not? Yeah, I think Batman 89 needs another <laughs> one or two before we dip into <laughs> those. Um, but yeah, you know, speaking of other movies, do you, uh, you guys want to get some classic segment? Recommend some things for some fine people? Do I have to recommend I would another love movie? That a second time. You you could be a movie. It could be a could be a play. Could be bread. Could be uh what 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 would be a weird thing to recommend? A specific type of weirder pen? than bread. Yeah, weirder than bread. I mean, there's there's a things physical I'm, sensation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's things I'm really into, like you know these pens that are like the only pens I buy. Well, oh, actually, like this that. isn't even one of them. I have better pens than these, but um. I could recommend those, but, but yeah, we'll start with DJ. DJ, what do you, uh, what do you have to recommend this week? Yeah. So, well, I have, um, I know last week I mentioned love is blind season seven and, uh, oh, I, Nana, yeah. have you been watching? I've only been able to get through the first episode, but I have been introduced to both of the characters you were describing the art dealer person and the kicker. Um, yes. and yes. I can see the fun coming from that. I mean, especially the art dealer. That guy is, <laughs> Something. Leo is um, something. Yeah, he's a piece of work. Uh, and, and this is just kind of more of an update than, than a recommendation, but if you needed more reason to watch, there is a guy on this season. His name is Tyler. He he winds up like in a relationship, gets engaged. <laughs> he claims to um, the person he's with that he is a sperm donor, like he was a sperm donor to three kids. Um, and it's only like a little sketchy because it's like he knows who the kids are and like Sometimes in that arrangement, you, you 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 just don't. I know you could, but like you know, sometimes you don't. Uh, but I mean, it's it's usually up to the kid, like the parents or the kids. Like they right, can right. find out who you are and contact right. you if they want to, but like you don't get to do that, right? right. Now, like that Vince Vaughn movie, the- <laughs> where he, yeah. This is not the scenario in this case. In this case, he is just a straight up father, and it's like no, I'm just a sperm donor, but he's just like a mm. dad. He's just like a dad who just told this woman that he's a sperm donor. He's not a sperm donor. He is just a straight up father and he's just now, lying about it. I was going to say, do we know for a fact that he's lying? Yes. Or do you str- Okay. Because so th- apparently here's how it went down. Um, had kids with this woman who he was in a relationship with. They broke up, but remained the father. The kids are all over his social <laughs> media, like tons of <laughs> photos, <laughs> tons of evidence. Unlike in a normal situation where you have a kid with a woman and then you break up, you stop being the father. I, yeah. Well, uh-huh. all right. Let me let me rephrase it. R- remained in the kids' lives, right? Like didn't didn't abandon the kids, right? Was still like mm. actively their father, all over social media and just like you know the kids. Um, told the 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 his ex who was the mom. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go on Love Is Blind. And like, you know, like the kids are like, they're around uh, the three kids. They're like in that, like five to nine range. They like know what's going mm. on. Right. It's not, it's not like confusing. So it's like, okay, I'll go on. Love is blind. And the mom, the kids are like, oh, good luck. Goes on. Love is blind. 
Now, we don't know what happened yet because the finale is this upcoming Wednesday. So we don't know what happened Ooh. yet. But because this all this all happened on like TikTok and social media. So I'm really curious to see how this unfolds like in, in after the reveal in the final. Comes back from Love is Blind, ghosts the mom and kids and is just like, I'm a sperm donor. That is like wow. now his story. Fucking wild. Fucking wild. Wow. They, I was going to say, except for the weird lie, it sounds like he didn't really like you know he's he seems like a perfectly normal like not bad guy. Nope. But <laughs> there it is. There's the weird uh, reality TV show celebrity behavior. Yep, yep. Just is like decided now he's no longer a father. It's just like I'm just a sperm donor. It's just like fucking crazy and the mom's like i don't know why he's doing this he doesn't talk to his kids anymore and he did before the show so like oh just some, like, maybe he got hit on the head or something on. and he forgot you know <laughs> amnesia did he go maybe skiing or Love something is recently <laughs> is actually some kind of uh uh like they kill the people who come on and replace them with replicants okay yeah, yeah. that's possible that's possible only way the show would work right Mm-hmm. Yeah, no one is that, naturally that insane. No. Yeah, that would explain why all the other things, like every season, there is someone who has such an obvious lie that they try to get away with. And it's like, well, that will come out, though, right? Like, yes, and, and they exactly. just seem to think it won't. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. You like it. It's not like this guy like deleted all his social media before going on yeah. the show. It's like all out there. You could like find it. It like it. Just, I don't understand people. Um, all this is to say it's a crazy season. Um, my prediction is I think this will be the first Love is Blind season ever where no couples wind up together. <gasps> every season we have at least one, even if they get divorced later, they like the show ends, quote unquote, with like them together. I think we're going to have the first season ever where there's no couples. It's going to be an and awkward finale with a bunch of single people. Because they've all and done you know, awful things like lie about their children or be short. Just unforgivable <laughs> yeah, <actions>. yep. <laughs> I think we should, if that does come to pass, they should yeah. have to, Nick and Vanessa Lachey should have to get divorced. Like, <laughs> because like their marriage the, is on the line? Because their yeah. experiments have failed. The experiments have failed oh, and love is not blind and like there is no love anymore, it's according to them. So yeah, I think there should be a little, some stakes in it for them. I kind of like that. I, I mean, like having that. watched, you know, last season's one where only one couple, I think, right, got married. Yep, one. Was one. And like. That was like a little funeral for for love. Uh, if none of them get married, that'll be really funny. And the, yeah, yeah, it, yeah the exciting. best tracker we have is season four. That was the Seattle one. And maybe people in Seattle are built different. But three couples got married from that season and they're all still together. And one of the couples has two kids. Mm. So like maybe how long has it been since that season? Oh, my gosh. At least I want to say like two and a half to three years. Which couple is that that has the kids? The Zach and I can't remember the woman's name, but it was the one where he picked a different woman and then she was mean to him and left him. And then Zach tried to like curry her favor. So the whole season was him trying to like reestablish the relationship. I cannot remember her name, but the guy's Wait, name was Zach. Is, we're not talking about Bliss, are we? Yes. Is that Bliss? Yes. Oh, yes. them? They have two kids? Oh, they have boy. two kids. Good for them. I know. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's yeah. crazy, crazy. So, like that, that season exciting. seemed like it worked. The, the the rest is kind of like a mixed bag. Um, okay. That so yeah. Sorry, none of this is recommendations. I just like talking about Love Is Blind. Uh, okay. Actual recommendations. Hey guys, the Great British Baking Show is back, and this is one of those evergreen wrecks. Mm. Uh, but why is this season different, guys? They finally did it. They put an expat on the show, so we finally have an American kinda who's on the show. Oh. He's from the Bronx. His name is Jack. He's a real character, and he has like the weirdest accent because he's lived in the UK for like ten years or whatever. So it's that like mm. American British like we like like some things he's got like weird. It's not just like an American accent. It's a Bronx accent. Like it's like a lot of that Bronx is still there. Uh, so Jack's That's a cool funny. guy um it was bread week was really good so i just that's like a good show you can watch i like i i i feel weird saying this out loud but like i really like prue leaf but she's getting up there in age and it's like i don't know how many more seasons she has in her so it's like i'm really trying to savor these who um, is that 
She's like the other judge that isn't Paul Hollywood. She's just like an old. British oh, lady. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, know right? So, um, mm. yeah. I hope I hope she lives forever, right? As you know, we lost sure. Pete Rose a few weeks ago. That was sad. Um, I think I don't know. And Who he was you look really to for your gambling inspiration now. I, I know. Guess, I was gonna say Pete Rose is getting groomed to take over for Paul Hollywood. So this is that was a real <laughs> devastating mistake. Like blow. it was bad for the community. Yeah, De- devastating blow. Um. So that's good. And then uh, other actual wreck that isn't the same as everything. Okay, so it's another board game. Shocker. Okay. What? I know. This is a cooperative board game. So for everyone who hates those, just skip ahead two minutes because I know that's not a lot of people's jam. But the name of this game is called Spirit Island. Uh, the premise of this game is uh, there. there's like a native island out in ocean and it is being colonized by those evil colonists you play as like the island spirits who are trying to drive away the colonists and their horrible plans to like take over and colonize the island. So you work with the island's natives to like um, use like scare tactics. Like you might have a big volcano eruption to try and destroy some of the colonist settlements, or you might have like a big tsunami or something, right? Like every spirit has like an element. There's like a fire, water, wind, earth. Um, And how do we make the spirits? Do you have to like, do gay weddings and stuff like how do you how do you create the natural disasters you know so mechanically there's a there's a deck it's it's kind of like a deck builder so you're trying to make an mm. engine to have you like have good car, car draws use your action points to make good moves and like you can work together like slight criticism uh, criticism of the game you have to have like a group who's like kind of bought into the concept because one person can kind of just like take over and it could be like four individual games of solitaire which like I I like maximizing my own engine, but like there is a teamwork aspect to it. I I almost wish, and I get why it's not, but like I almost wish it was like competitive where you're all working toward the same goal, but like you get individual points. So it's like I'm the fire one. I want to do best get rid of the colonists. But like there is an aspect of the game where it's like, well, I if I use my wind powers to move all the colonists to like this corner, flood guy, can you drown them all in your awesome flood tsunami? Mm. So like that is an aspect of the game. That I think, like, from a design perspective is how it's supposed to work, but, like, it, it doesn't always execute that way. But I still think it's a good game because, like, the engine building of, of the game is fun. I really, really like it. And I think it's a fun premise. Like, isn't that cool? You play spirit gods trying to crush colonists. Like, I think that's fun. Um, mm. That's, like, good creative flavor for game. Because like, I feel like so many other games, it's like you are the colonizer, right? It's like, all right, now build your cities and civilization and da-da-da. And, so what CJ is telling us is that he's betraying his people. Yeah, I hey, I, think you know, sh- I, 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 you know, I'm not a colleague. Until- I'm a colonizer, as that word says. So, you know, mm. how long betray. until there's a version where you can play as the colonizers? When's that going to be a thing? <laughs> you know? Spirit Island, but now you're the other ones. Yeah, isn't there? Wasn't there like a um, pandemic expansion pack at one point where you were the bioterrorist, right? Like, yeah, that was in one of them. You could like be the bad guy. I think that was in Legacy. So, yeah. You could be the bad guy. Um, I think that'd be pretty cool. It all. There's also like a billion expansions for this game, of which I've never played. Like, if you just like Google um, Spirit Island expansion, like there's so many. Like Jagged Earth, Nature Incarnate, uh, Feather and Flame. I think they all just add different spirits. Like I'm guessing this one you play as a phoenix, the Feather and Flame one. Um, mm. So. The game is kind of like that, where it's like it's just built to like sell you more copies. But the base game is good. Um, you know, I I I, I like it. Uh, so yeah, Spirit Island. It's a good cooperative game. And if you hate cooperative games, I promise you, you won't like this. Like this won't be your gateway drug into cooperative games. You'll be like, this is why I hate cooperative games. And I understand that some people just are, you know, uh, you, you want to fight. You're just born fighters. Um, so anyway, that's my recommendation. Dickens, what about you? I watched a little movie called, uh, The Wild Robot. Oh, Oh, so good. I want to watch it. Hold on, DJ. What? Me? So good. Yeah. Is it bad? Is it bad? No, obviously I'm wrecking it. It's a good movie. right. But you said so good, I want to watch it. Mm. How can you, how do you know? So so happy for you good i'm sorry i'm sorry for interrupting this is my punishment i'm sorry (laughs) um no no it is a very good movie um 
So this is the, if you haven't heard of it, uh, because that guy on Twitter, just uh, whenever a robot movie comes up, is like, it's Transformers 1. Mm, no, 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 no. Yeah. there's a second one. Uh, and it is about a robot, like a helper robot that washes, like, gets like lost at sea and washes ashore on a remote island. Or it's not that remote, really, but on an island that where just like wildlife lives. Uh, and she sort of has to uh, adapt to her new surroundings, including uh, she ends up raising a little gosling. Uh, and you know, from there, it becomes very much a story about like parenthood, uh, as well as this sort of idea of uh, adaptation to nature and, you know, having to sort of like adjust to your surroundings, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, on like a base elemental level, it's like a lot of things you've seen before in terms of this kind of movie, but I think they do a really good job of like making it very specific in this story and also just doing it really well. Uh, Lupita Nyong'o, who plays the robot, I think she puts in a really, a really good, one of those like performances that would never get nominated for an Oscar because she's not putting on a lot of makeup or like doing yeah. a silly voice, mm -hmm. uh, but is actually like a really nuanced, like very well done performance. Um, uh, and also Matthew Berry's in it. So that's always oh. fun. Does he play the robot from Fallout again that shows up in this? <laughs> no. Like, hello, he a, it's me. He, he plays a beaver. What? Does, does he give incredible fantasy football advice? Mmm, that's that true. Thing there Barry are different does? Matthew Berries. Yeah. It's a thing a Matthew Berry does. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm talking about the, the superior Matthew Berry. Oh, get wrecked, wow. other Matthew Berry. Yeah. Listen, My being not as good as Matthew Berry, the actor, is hardly an insult. <laughs> oh my God. That's fair. He's such that's a, fair. Yeah, he's wonderful. Uh, and you know what? I bet he would have good fantasy football advice it's not that hard you know that's true we don't I mean, know that actor matthew barry doesn't give good fantasy football advice yeah. well he is british so he probably doesn't know anything about american football <laughs> maybe fantasies yeah. your actual football advice well we keep sending the fucking the football teams to england and but brazil and shit they eventually they're gonna have to pick up some of it by osmosis <laughs> but it's the bad ones i don't know if this yeah it is the bad ones happens yet but there's a uh New York Giants, Carolina Panthers game. No, it happens mm. in like a month in Germany. And it feels like we're like punishing Germany for, you know, certain crimes they may have done several mm. decades ago. But it does feel like that because that was going to be a terrible game. Yeah. DJ, are you suggesting that we punish people who commit unforgivable crimes against humanity? That's it seems true. like the NFL yeah. might, but also mm. they don't. So <laughs> never mind. The I feel like too, um, the Matthew Barry. Even if he didn't pick it up from watching the games, I, I, if I remember correctly, in what we do in the shadows, the show, I think his neighbors are big Jets fans or something like that. I feel like yes. the Jets have a presence on the show, so he'd be really bad at fantasy if all he knew was Jets. That's and, true. Like, <laughs> point. You know. Well, no, he would know. Don't pick anyone on That's the Jets. That's true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That's good smart. advice, right? Yeah. Uh. But yeah, no, The Wild Robot is a very good, very sweet, um, and I, I, it, it was getting me towards the end, emotionally. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I think if you get a chance to see it in theaters, I don't know how much longer it's going to be in theaters. I think it was doing, like, decently financially, so uh, maybe yeah, it'll stick Yeah, I think it was doing around. pretty well, even though it's on VOD now. Because I know, just, crazy like, choice by that. It is on that. VOD now, but if... If you can see it in theaters and you haven't run over any witches, mm -hmm. uh, then I think you should because I think it's uh, really good. And also, they do they do a little bit of that Puss in Boots uh, stuff. Oh, uh, with the animation, not they don't go as far as Puss in Boots does, but they do a little bit of it. Uh, does it nice. does the movie explain why it's important to be a dad? Mm, I bet it does. What about being a mom? Okay. Oh. Okay. So this one isn't for dads, it's for moms. Finally. Right. 
I guess it's that's okay. I mean, there's kind of a dad figure you could identify with. Oh, is there good? I didn't even know that. Good. Kind of. Hmm. The robot gets it on with like a tree or something. Like... I would say he's giving more uncle energy. Okay, that's but, mm. you know, like surrogate dad. Yeah, what is uncle but other dad? You know. That's true. As we know from well, that's not exactly yeah. Journey Two, but you know, whatever. Well, no, in Journey 1, yeah, he is an uncle. Jesus. In Journey mm-hmm. 1, he's an uncle. In Journey 2, he's a stepdad. Right. So That's as right. we learned yeah. in Journey 1, what is uncle but other dad? See, full mm-hmm. circle. There we go. Anyway, that's yeah. my rec for this week. What about you, Nando? Um, I only have two things. Uh, besides comics, I feel like I've been reading a lot, but nothing that I've been like in love with. There's a couple of books that I haven't gotten yet uh, that, that have just come out um, that I'm waiting till. Cause I'm going I keep, I keep going like, should I go to the comic book store? I'm like, no, cause I'm going to go to Comic-Con and buy this too. So I'll just get it there. Um, but I'll probably have more recommendations on that next week. Um, I would say my two recommendations this week, one, and I've been talking about it a lot off camera, but I've made even more progress on crazy ex-girlfriend. I watched maybe three or four episodes a day. And um, it really is like one of the funniest shows. I I'm shocked they made it like that. It was able to be created with money on like a network that's not know, HBO the, the or fact, something. The fact like, that it's a network show is insane. Yeah. It's nuts. Like it's so there's, there's 13 episode seasons and then a 16 episode season, I think. So like there's so much of it and it's like, yeah, just really well produced and expensive in a way that I'm like, they really used to make shows like this. It's, it's pretty impressive before, you know, but the collapse or whatever we're dealing with now. Um, but uh but yeah no it's great and like it's very funny um i do think season two is i i'm guessing season two is probably the one where the most stuff kind of happens and it's just like the most i don't know not like stuff happens but um i could see season two being the fan favorite one um because it just it has an energy that uh i think you can't get in season one you need to build to it but it's before things get a little too you know too much stuff starts actually it's hard to explain anyway yeah so season two was great um the the season two theme song is definitely the best one i don't know i like the season one theme song going back i think that's like pretty fun also great yeah the season two theme song uh that yeah the season two theme song is great the closing joke on the season two theme song wow gets me every time for sure and well oh i thought you were gonna say the way that yeah um I see. I like the this. I forget what it is about the season one theme song that I really like, um, but uh, what was it? I don't know. But I do like. I like the moment in season one where they say the theme song and they just go through every every uh, every lyric of the theme song one by one. That's that real is, fun. That is also very funny. So you know, it's a great. I think it's a great show, and it's it's old, but it's not that old. Like it's you know maybe ten years old. I don't know when did it come out. Um, yeah, I think it was airing about 10 years ago, although that saying that out loud makes me want to melt. I know. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty insane that they, uh, yeah, that they made this 2015 to 2019. Okay. So like technically it ended five years ago. If you want to be, uh, you know, that makes you want a little less feel less melty. Yeah. If you want to be more solid. Uh, so I, yeah, I really like it. Um, I'm not done with it, so I'll give a final recommendation probably next week, but very into it. Uh, the only other thing I watched this week, I was talking to someone, uh, Antonio, on the uh, in the book club uh, a while ago about this. But, Antonio um, Banderas? I mean, maybe, you know. We, I guess we don't use last names in the book club, not for, like, Antonio Banderas reasons, uh, but maybe that is a rule that could uh, facilitate Antonio Banderas in the future. But um, they were talking about um, a movie that, because of Substance and Margaret Qualley, they were talking about another Margaret Qualley movie that they really liked. And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. And uh, I forget why, but I had, like, some time to kill. And, oh, it was because I saw a really silly meme. Um, and uh, I was convinced that I was kind of like, all right, now i got to see this. So I watched a movie the other day called... Uh, let me just make sure I know what it's called. Sanctuary. Dickens, have you ever seen this? Is that the one where it's like her and the guy in the hotel room and she yes. he's trying to fire her, essentially? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't seen it, but I do know about it. I liked it. I thought it was good. Um, it's definitely unusual, and it's definitely going for like a play vibe. Uh, I'm I wouldn't be shocked if it was a stage play at some point, or if it was written as that. Um, she, it's it's two people like we're saying, Margaret Qualley, and then Christopher Abbott, who I wasn't super familiar with, but um, he is in Poor Things. He's the guy that's like the um. I don't want to say well the like eventual husband who's like a general or something right or like some you know the guy who's like the, the rich guy, guy the guy at the end basically yeah yeah, yeah I yeah. can't remember what his actual role was but him that that actor and it doesn't seem like he does too much other stuff that I like I would have seen so I don't know what his deal is he looks in this movie like he's playing a young um Mark Ruffalo he's got that vibe really really specific um but I thought it was good. Oh, he's in Craven the Hunter. Hello. Oh, let's okay. go. Oh, he's playing the foreigner. Okay. The foreigner is a uh, a really weird Spider-Man. Not a weird Spider-Man villain. Pretty boring Spider-Man villain, honestly. But um, one of the ones who you're like, I guess that technically was customs. enough to be a guy, pretty much. Yeah, it really is. He's not from he's a, here. Yeah. Look at his he's crazy a, passport. <laughs> he's a... Uh, yeah, I'm surprised I... They not, I did not realize that was him. Oh, and he's in that Wolfman movie that's coming out soon, so he's cool. But anyway, the movie it's it's a um, it's a movie you probably don't want to watch with like your parents. But besides that, I wouldn't say it's as really. I'll, I'll, well, okay, hold on. I'll give you like the the idea of it, and then I think you could kind of walk back from it a little bit. Uh, it's about a man who is for reasons that are explained in the movie. Uh, he, he has a relationship with a dominatrix, um, and he is trying to fire her. And that's the whole movie. But she doesn't want to be fired. And it's this big kind of push and pull, whatever. Um, so you're like, oh, it's a it's like a movie about dominatrixy stuff. Like kind of like it's it's not just about that. And it's not really like you're not watching too much of that happen. The language of it is a big part of the movie, but it's not I think it's going for not super explicit uh for for the purposes of just making it about more of a you know cerebral game of cat and mouse or something so mm. i really liked it and um yeah i think i think it's pretty it's it's just interesting and i think she's good i really do like after substance in this i didn't realize she was a nepo baby um i wish she wasn't because yeah. then i'd be like yeah you know they still make you know movie stars that don't come from other stars but whatever at least <laughs> no, they're good sorry. when we, they do we, come from other stars we still only have sydney sweeney it really is. The, yeah. Oh, man. Marco Qualley's in uh, she's in uh, Happy Gilmore 2 coming out soon. So that'll be fun. Oh, right. Um, They're making that with fucking. Oh, my God. OK, real quick. This is a side wreck. Um, Hannah's watching a show this week called the um, 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 what is it called? Um, Grotesquery or whatever. New Ryan Murphy show. It oh, stars yeah. Travis Kelsey is like a what? main character actor in it. Yeah. It's weird. I was going to say that because he's also coming up at the top of the uh, Happy Gilmore 2 cast. So, uh, okay. Is he is he the brother? In the show? It's unclear. No, oh, wait. No, no, you no, no, you no. mean in real life? Um, yeah. Or is that no, he, the boyfriend? Uh, Wait. It's the... You're saying... Is he the one dating Taylor Swift or is he the one who's the brother of the one dating Taylor Swift? I think he's the one dating Taylor Swift, right? Wait. Who's the other one? What's the other one's name? I don't know. That's DJ, why you I'm should, asking. You know this. Who's the other? There's Travis Kelsey. Jason he's the, Kelsey. Yeah. And J, what's Jason Kelsey's deal? Is he just he's just around? He he's not playing football anymore. He, oh, he used to play football though. He was a center oh, for right, the Philadelphia that guy. Eagles. Yeah, with the beard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, now now you can see him in Buffalo Wild Wings commercials. I feel like he's that's gonna what he's say, I see him, doing. I see him in commercials sometimes. So I'm like, is he like an actor now? I don't understand any of this. I don't know <laughs> the the the. Football player to, ah, uh, like quote unquote actor, like transitions, like really weird, like because mm. I think we talked about this we did, already. Yeah. There's yeah. only one guy who's ever done it, and uh, apparently he had to make a kind of dark deal to get it done. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think it always works out, but you know. Well, it's interesting too, because um, I, even if you don't know, because I wasn't super familiar with the Jason Kelsey, Travis Kelsey dichotomy. I knew there were two of them and I knew obviously to know who Travis Kelsey is, but I didn't realize it was this guy, uh, this Jason Kelsey fella. Um, 
I have seen so many times at the grocery store some fucking cereal that these two brothers made that's we like Fruity Pebbles mixed with other too. stuff. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, that is my main exposure to them as brothers. And uh, the box doesn't get really explicit with who, who they are. It doesn't tell their that's origin fair. stories they don't have in the big picture signs. Well. Yeah. It's a bummer because that used to be what the, you know, yeah, every cereal box would introduce us to a new mascot and we would get a little bit of an introduction to them. And they just assume think, because we are millennials, we know who Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey are, but we don't. Not do you think least. that every time a new company pitches like a brand deal to them or something, they have to like pretend that it's because they're football players? They're mm. like, no. yeah, you're yeah. just such a famous football guy. We <laughs> yeah. want you to do our cereal. I mean, after stuff like Happy Gilmore and Grotesquery, maybe they'll, they'll be like, oh, you know, Travis Kelsey, you're such a great actor. You've really, you know, made it. You've, you've crossed over. And I don't think he's terrible in grotesque or anything. I haven't really watched it. But uh, it just blows my mind to see him in a show as a character that isn't just him. I mean, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but this is kind of Taylor Swift's fault, right? She made mm. Travis Kelsey uber famous. And I think that kind of brought the Jason Kelsey, like, boat tied or yeah. whatever like a lot it's, it. it's almost like that's the point i was making <laughs> 10 seconds ago it's a great i would point, blame James. that i would also blame his snl appearance i think every so often one of these actors uh mm. that or one of these transition actors going from uh sports to to film ends up on uh snl and everybody's like oh my god they're so funny and that's yeah. what they really need to believe they can do this so yeah. it, it happened for peyton manning though peyton manning never no made it didn't the, uh, like the actor pipeline right like he's good on tv doing sports stuff and and commercials he's really good yeah. at commercials but that's the that's actually i think commercials that's the highest the form of acting yeah is it i think maybe yeah that's in I mean, terms of amount of work you put in to amount of money you're paid absolutely okay sure and sure, corporate sure. value just generally being the most important thing generating mm. so much corporate value that like right yeah, that's true so much yeah of uh, shareholder value <laughs> yeah like this guy christopher abbott whoever the fuck we were just talking about who's very good in certain movies sure but like how much does state farm or whatever get from him like how much has he you know, right. increase their bottom line very little, probably comparatively. It's a great so. point, Nando. He's basically worthless. Point. Yeah, <laughs> might as well just quit. Uh, sorry, Christopher Abbott, but this is one of those podcasts where people are going to be like, "You're not as good as Jason Kelsey," and he's mm -hmm. probably sick of hearing it. But this is another <laughs> one. Um, this is a but, Sigma uh, grind set pod oh, now. We're all about that yeah. hustle. God. Mm -hmm. Body counts and stuff. Everybody loves that. Uh, I've watched a couple of videos recently about those videos where guys walk up to women on the street and ask weird questions to get them to be hawked to a girl. It's very upsetting. No, um, no, yeah, no, no. Bad, bad thing. It sucks. But it's a phenomenon that is only going to keep getting popular. So you go to like Nashville, you're just going to see a street populated by all of these people. Uh, and that's that's fun, I guess. Um, just real quick. That is silly, though, and not to do complete reruns, but Dickens already brought up this point at a previous podcast. Like, it, the guy who did the interview with Hawk to a girl did not get incredible fame. Mm. So you're only helping someone else. You're not helping yourself. So I don't understand well, why that's... To be fair, he probably uh, gets a steady view count on just doing yeah. this like he's not yeah he's not third most popular podcast on spotify famous but he probably gets something all right and he also enough. probably like now does it with a with a hoodie on that says hawk to a girl <laughs> yeah, found to a, so yeah. more people come up to him for it or, yeah, it's it's insane it's it's its own little weird little industry that i hope mm -hmm. will be gone in a couple of weeks like you know it'll flame out i don't think um, so also, but either if way, I'm being one of those guys, I don't want to get too famous because then people are going to look into me. And I, if I'm yeah. the kind of guy who does this, That's true. I've definitely done some shit. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a limit to how much you can, yeah, how, how close you can fly to the sun. Um, so anyway, uh, my recommendation was that movie with the with the with the person, um, Sanctuary. I keep want to say substance because it's an ass word. Um, probably about the same number of letters as someone who does the New York Times crossword puzzle every day. It's very, uh, I, I think of words only in their letter to a starting letter of value. Uh, as but, you should. Yeah, anyway, it's all, it's all that matters. Um, what are we going to do next week? We were talking about this before. We don't have a great answer for this. 
So basically, we could do a debt, we could do some random shitty streaming movie, or we could continue Hutchtober. Yeah, if only, I, I think we've got a couple of Hutch movies that we're thinking about. None are jumping out as the obvious next step like this one did. So we'll know soon, but if, if anybody has suggestions or anything, welcome to throw them out and, you know, that might help. Or, or maybe we finally do debt, who knows? Who, I feel like knows? we can't do movie debt in Hunchtober. Like it, I feel like the, yeah. any, any other month it's fine, but in October it's like you gotta do, you gotta, you know, yeah, Hunch- you say it's sacred. Yeah. Everyone's covering Josh Hutcherson movies in October. We can't be left behind. Mm-hmm. Even though we started like two thirds through the month. That's how it well, happens. That's just par for the course for our theme months. Yeah, that's Hutch. You know, <laughs> that's he's Hutch. A, he's a short king. His Hutch month is a short month of months you know it's one of the even though it is october one of the longer months i was gonna say shouldn't it be like hutchuary then it should yeah Yeah. but uh but yeah so we'll figure it out um dj do you have anything to plug uh i mentioned uh roses and rejections my podcast on the pop ring network where we're extensively covering love is blind so if you want the Mm. real deep dives check that out and i think that's it that's that's all i'm gonna say so diggins what about you Mm, no what about you nando uh videos out um my blade pitch will be out on nebula before this podcast comes out so that you can watch that that's very fun uh which means my zatanna should be a main character in the dc video will be on youtube so people can watch that Uh, besides that just like other you know stuff that i do like the snap videos the agatha videos um i think agatha this week was very interesting and um uh, and I think the next Snap video coming out, which is on Nebula now, is for Toxin, who's an interesting character, who's actually, the he's been in the Venom movies. He's the, the cop in the second one who, like, gets infected with Carnage. And I never knew what that character's deal was before. Uh, but it's it's not what I expected. So it's kind of something. Um, uh, and you can watch all those on either, you know, Nando V movies or the Nando cut. Uh until next week, I've been at Nando V Movies on Twitter. I'm at Zippy by Day. I'm at This Is an Odd Man. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.